Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Deragizme, lover. But right now, we, uh, at the end of the last episode, we struggled getting the status of the reconstruction completely done. But now we've got it, and I did not use cons commands. I did the one that gave us reconstruction, um, the one that gave us either like 20% for 10, or the one that gave us 80% for 5. Did that enough times, didn't do the one that gave us the 60-40% chance, so regardless. Didn't use cost commands yet, but we can declare reconstruction complete. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Also, I did redo the uh, parts of the last episode just because now we have like no political power. But right now we've done all the emergency reforms that lowers our public approval. Uh, the Heartland influence is 16%. And as you can see, we don't political power, but we still have 42% public opinion or approval. And a lot of house of support uh, House of Peers support. And we're still doing political cleansing, so if you'd like to reread that one again, please go right ahead. So after this one, we won't be able to preserve the Ko to Kai just yet. So if you want to reread The Civilians Will Learn, please go right ahead. So here's this one as well. Public approval decreased by 5%, which we can do. And if you want to read this one again, please go right ahead as well. And I think I read this one last time, so. <clears throat> yeah, I think I read this one maybe. Um. Yeah, I've already read this one, so there you go. After this one, let's see. So we have anti diet anti-corruption. So right now, we are 240 out of 233. Actually, the less support you get from, or the less relations you have with the Hardliners, the better support you have from the other factions, which is kind of interesting. So, enforce faction unity, um, decrease power, correlate conservatives, increases conservatives' power. We don't need to do any of this, because we have 240 out of this. Um, let's see. When selected, public approval increases. Our power increases, effectiveness of one-party state political parties, and admin efficiency begins to improve. And it looks like 84% out of 50 80%. Should we succeed? 5% more government support. Not bad. And we can target the reformists next. We got extreme environment training. Got some comes go through. Quentin Paredes inaugurated as president. Boy, who's this? Is that? Is that Vatican City? No? No? Oh. Oh, whatever. Yeah, our economy's doing pretty poorly, I'd say. Uh, it is 1964 only, still, of course. So let's keep working on that stuff, because we do have Marines and whatnot. Let's see. What else do we have here? Business taxes. This is looking pretty bad. Uh, what are the comments was? Maybe plays Takagi and Ikeda or Tapu Sens? Maybe eventually. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. When am I going to play the Toolbox Theory United States? You know, Toolbox Theory update with the United States. Someone also wants me to do Glenn with Toolbox 3, so we'll see what happens. Um, maybe? At the time of this recording, I'm not really sure. And also, someone also says, spend more money on civilian stuff, maybe, to make the deficit worse. Huh. Or at least make the growth better. Uh, social funding, you know what, we could try it. Deficit, 6.2 billion. It go all the way to the bottom, though. It doesn't help growth that much, though. And so science spending? It helps a little bit, but the deficit just explodes. So, I, we could try it like that. We could try for now. Helps with well, it doesn't help out with growth that much, honestly. Huh. And the Germans are still in the Civil War, which is nice. Howard Wilson won. Civilians will learn the might of our military. Um well, no. Insurgency defeated. No, that's good. Well, the bell's not active than diet. Uh the might of our military. Uh Bell's not active than diet. I guess we could try this one too. National Pres Values Preservation Act. Of course, I'll do this one to get the admin efficiency. The might of our military. With the military is assured of its position in the regime, the Prime Minister could continue to pioneer his vision for the state-driven reforms back home, safe in the knowledge that the might of the armed forces is on his side, or at least too busy in other places to challenge his authority. Time alone will tell how long this arrangement can hold. And the reformists. If not selected, we will decrease relations. When selected, their reformist power goes down. Relations will increase. Yeah, we're not going to touch that one at all. Oh, we can do this stuff too. Oh, we know political power. God dang it. Growth will increase. Business taxes. Only got 19 days left, less than three weeks, which is good. And over here, we gotta increase a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, 81% is. That's pretty strong. That's pretty gosh darn strong, I'm not gonna lie. But I do wanna see in 1965 how bad is the real GDP growth, because inflation, well, we're cutting it down by 0.434%. Yeah, we're spending most of the budget on the military, on the civilian side, and then the military. 3.011. Oh, it got even worse. 
Oh boy. Unauthorized go, slow action. Disru disruption of the Kyoto Sen is beginning to draw an unfortunate amount of attention. Train drivers, apparently, <clears throat> frustrated by lack of responsiveness on the part of management, seem to have brought their complaints about working conditions into the public in the form of a daily slow go action. As the train is spending up to a couple of m minutes at each station, flyers outlining the driver's request are circulated among the ridership. Crucially and embarrassingly, one of the demands is for measures to commit suicides by train. Suicide has been a growing problem, and one we have spent a great deal of energy playing down the significance of. For it to be common enough to be a source of major concern for train drivers, flies in the face of the messaging undoing our efforts. While the matter is now being dealt with, a lot of damage has already been done, and we should expect a significantly higher con consciousness on the suicide issue in the near future. The high level of coordination and fiscification of the printed material makes us believe that train drivers are unlikely to be um, operating alone. Unfortunately, however, our investigators, our investigations, will have have so far failed to make any progress in uncovering who their backers might be. Darn it. Also, I do apologize. I just yawned there, so. Bobby's looking slightly better. Research is still, still getting better as well. It's nice. And let's keep doing industrial stuff. Oh, man, this just sucks so much. Even if it's, I mean, it's a good thing we have an unlimited debt ceiling, but at the same time. Oh, boy. Just oh, boy. Debt servicing. Oh, boy. And we need more political power. We've done pretty much everything we focus that we can, that we don't need to spend political power, but whether through luck or, or efficient planning, our bills manage to make it past institutions of power. None can question our effectiveness as a legitimate governor, governors of Japan, and our governor's reputation has been boosted. On to the next one. Yay! More governance support. Admin efficiency begins to improve. All this good stuff. Some members of our diet re reassess their support for government, continue to manage relationships with other factions. Poor, terrible, terrible cordial. Uh, provide funding. Spend money when you select it. Inflation will increase. GDP will increase, but you know we're not going to do that one. But when the diet's done, great. How about another bill? Clocking in. Morning, Honda, said Representative Aruaka. Arukawa. As one of the other met walking sheepishly towards the diet building, the disguise of a Chiyoda were a dull gray, promising rain but failing to deliver. Representative Honda murmured out a small greeting of his own as they walked towards a looming granite structure. Did you hear? asked Arukawa. They finally got Yasumoto Yasutomo last night. Caught him stuffing money into a sack in the middle of the night. Mistress and everything. Like something from a newspaper cartoon. No crap, Honda raised an eyebrow. Thought that even that dude would have been more careful, or at least had some kind of backup plan for this. How the heck did a guy like him get through Yasuda otherwise? I guess he might have had to call in all his favors back then. And in any case, he's gone. Him and 30 others, from what I can tell, Hashimoto Sato from Hokkaido, Seki Gucci. Wait, Seki Gucci? asked Honda. I thought you two were in business together, in a manner of speaking. We were, but I did it the smart way, said Arukawa. The kind that's protected under riders and compromise. For now, at least, no matter what Kaya says, I want, I, I remain a free man. Well, I'll be more careful of our use at Honda. Next time, you might just end up like Yasu Tomo. You can't get away with what we used to. Sad but true. Actually, you know what? Instead of this one, this one. We might want to do this one first so we can still take names and stuff like that. Yeah, it's probably best to do that. Pursue the code to Kai. If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. So we can do this bill first and then do the other one so we can keep working on the focus sheet. Because if we do this one, they have to wait for the bill to pass and for another 35 days. So we do this one and then do this one. Um, and then we'll be able to take, take names and stuff like that. So then we'll see what happens. <clears throat> but for now, it's it's not good that we have so much, or so little GDP, or or yeah, I mean yeah, but political power really. BP is going to make or break us in this, this campaign probably. But yeah, the Philippines are doing fine. Oh, Ben has been elected too. Ibuke, huh? The new neighbors. Seeing as from his cozy position in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sinuchi has seen writing on the wall for some time. It was all printed right up to the great map of Asia in his office. Slowly but surely, the marks representing the activities of various consulates, development agencies, joint projects with cultural affairs in various nations all were drying up. What they were being replaced with instead was the garrisons at Tache's joint training camps, naval bases, things of that sort, from Kwantung to Luang, Lu, 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 Kuala Lumpur. Civilian authorities were fighting into the background as various jurisdictional su scuffles were sorted. The army and navy were moving in. Sunichi looked around in his cozy little office and wondered if it would be so cozy this time next year, far away in the much grander, less cozy office. Aoki Kazuo turned to Kaya. The ministries are going less than pleased, you know. Every day, more mail comes in, going on about overreach or abuse of power, or the complete impossibility of working together productively, productively with whatever branch of the armed forces we are encroaching on their perches. If things continue this way, we may have a serious problem. 
Kai's expression remained blank. We always knew something of this sort would occur. Fear of poking the hornet's nest is what led to our current predicament. We can no longer afford such applications. The integration plan goes ahead. The civilians will learn eventually. Yeah, not bad. And if we lower our relations, lower, less influence, let's go higher. So that's all we really care about. Of course, business taxes as well, which we're going to spend more political power. Subsidize, subsidize your growth, perhaps. Or bail out the struggling business. Maybe we'll do that one first, just so we get that 60 cost done. You know, that's a lot of political power still. It's fine. Where are we at now? Uh, 55%, 42%, 174. That's actually really nice. Holy crap. 12. Ah. Orsk is going to kill the Euro League. Beautiful. Take names. We'll read that one very soon, too. The might of our military. If we can do that. Yeah. Take names. It's hard to tell whether the relic bureaucrats from the annual administration are truly enemies of the Prime Minister, but it makes no difference. Japan is a nation of the future, and our bureaucracy should represent that fact. These aged professionals shall be removed from their position so that they may not damage our regime further with their antiquated practices. And if they happen to be supporters of our enemies' factions, all the better. Because this one is going to cost us... Actually gives us more political power, but way, way worse cost. And research facilities gets even worse. Hmm. Or we hold on to the conservative support. Make lists. Some anti-government organizations still remain within our nation, be it socialist or any other kind of filth. No dissent can be allowed in Japan, none at all. With the help of a home ministry in Tokyo, we shall send forth our agents to remove and de-radicalize the threats to our homelands. Alright, so, we have 246 out of 233 needed, 81% out of 50 needed, nice. Purification and compromise. Even with the full cabinet assembled, their air seemed to crackle tensely whenever Aoki, Shina, Fukuda, and Kishi spoke. Those four were the leading representatives of the new bureaucrats and the hardliners, and they spoke in guarded, cautious tones to avoid giving the other side an unearned advantage. Today, Shina has presented his proposals, no doubt backed by Kishi, to purify the national spirit, and Aoki and Fukuda had dispensed with their tact and caution in return. Don't you see, Shina exclaimed, tapping the draft legislation with his free hand. You see, this corruption was only possible because everyone strayed from the essential character of this nation. Honor, duty, filial loyalty, replaced by the division of liberalism and the false utopia of socialism. And your solution is to browbeat citizens of businesses into compliance with penalties? Aoki shot back, disdain dripping from his words. The economy plunges to new depths every day, and you want to spend time on indoctrination rather than work? It's un unenforceable, and it's a mistake. If you're that set on political education, Fukuda pointed out, barely hiding a sneer, we already have the national broadcaster, why not? I don't see why this is so controversial, Kishi said, cutting Fukuda off briskly. We're all mem we all memorized the imperial re rescript on education as school children. That's the first duty as imperial subjects, but where we can excuse children for getting, the adults need to face consequences. We won't let dissidents go unpunished. That's what the toko are for. Kaya pinched his nose in frustration. Drop the talk about penalties, Shina. We will work with the rest. Even as, even as they accepted, they remain divided. And there we have it, everyone. The bill passed again in the diet. A little more IJA and N support. Academic base slowly begins to improve. More technocrat power. And government civility increases by six. So overall... 61%, not bad. Still 37% public support, not bad as well. We have 207 House of Representatives. That seems kind of crazy, but just in case, we're going to launch a prompt mechanic campaign. And it looks like Borman has won the Civil War. Uh, shushing and li the library. Sorry, Miyuki, but don't get I don't get why we're reading this, whispered Ryonosuke. I'll get the Minobe's ban and all, but now can his work help us in any meaningful way? If he had his way back then, we, maybe we'd have a loosened leash, but it'll all be the same crap. Politicians would blather about the status of the emperor, but he'd still be there. Well, that's exactly it, isn't it? countered Miyuki. It's not enough to simply cite Lenin or Luxembourg's comments on the bourgeois democracy, especially given the distance of Japan. But we must examine the Japanese tradition more thoroughly, consider we constantly hear any invocations of the emperor. But when has the emperor acted in any real kind of independent fashion? Maybe Minobe proposes to subordinate the emperor's position and lead that of a symbol of the state. Does this not reflect the uh, unsaid reality of the present? Before Ryonosuke could respond, a knock came at the door, followed by Akira walking in slowly. Have sake, man, it's been 20 minutes. Were you followed? began Miyuki, who was interrupted by Akira leveling a Toko badge of the reading group. I'll give you one chance to surrender, said Akira, if that was indeed his real name. You have three seconds. Before the two had passed, however, Ryo, Ryo no Suke rushed towards Akira, fist balled. An instant later, he was held over the floor, a bullet lodged into his gut. A whole column of Toko entered the small room shortly after, slamming the desperate students to the floor with little effort. Akira stood there to the side, observing Ryo no Suke's twitching blow him. Shame, he said to himself. Nice. Very nice. And we can still sideline these guys too, which we probably want to do, <clears throat> but we'll get there in just a little bit. I do want to spend money first for that, because that this is the most important one to get immediately, so there you go. 40%, pretty good. 
1.5 to 1 pickle power is not bad, but still. Still. Take names. I don't ever read this one again. It's hard to tell whether the relic bureaucrats from the Eno administration are truly enemies of the Prime Minister, but it makes no difference. Japan is a nation of the future, and a bureaucracy should represent the staff. These aged professionals shall be removed from their positions so that they may not damage the regime further with antiquated practices. And if they happen to be supporters of our enemies' factions, all the better. All right. And our economy is looking slightly better with negative 1% real growth. Hardliners propose the Higher Education Act. Prime Minister Cabinet Secretary Shina just came in and asked if he could consider passing this. The Secretary handed Kaya Okunori another bill drafted by Shina Kishin, the Hardliners. Kaya scanned through the bill. The bill titled the Higher Education Act called for the extensive reform of the Imperial University System. Should the bill be passed, the government would be authorized to appoint an administrative superintendent to each Imperial University. They said superintendent shall, uh, shall possess the power to pink slip any faculty member or suspend any student who demonstrates behavior that could potentially jeopardize national security. Needless to say, the superintendent requires no evidence as the basis for the action is not obligated to send any prior notice of the punishment. The second part of the act entails a change in focus in higher education. Budget cuts shall be applied to the non-STEM departments of every university receiving government funds. Each imperial university would require to modify their entrance exam in a way that favors STEM students and poses difficulty to humanities and social science students. In the draft, Shina left a note writing that if the bill is successfully implemented, future generations of Japanese shall be smarter, more patriotic, and more supportive to our cause. The future of the empire once again rests on Kaya's hands. Well, we'll see. And we're almost done here, too, so which is actually really nice. The might of our military. Happy 65, everybody. We're going to get some better improvements for the economy and industry. Yes, please. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's a lot better. 0.19 is better than 0.39 that we had earlier. But take names. All right, so we have 244 out of 233 needed. 84% out of 50. Only one of the keto white supports us. Oh, wow, that's really bad. There's only four. Or one out of four. Wow. And if we win, what do we get? Anything? A new month, maybe? Minimal investment in army funding. Oh my goodness. I still want to highlight them though. There goes Vyaka. Move quick. Oh, this will hurt. Oh my gosh, you get minus 0.5 political power. Holy crap. That is so bad. I'm not sure we can do that one. I'd rather do Untangled Economy. Yeah. I'm talking about the economy. Waste is an anemis, nemesis of efficiency in all things. The excessive economic bureaucracy of the empire must be called cleaned out of the venal interests and parochial fiefdoms. Some might say that paring the state down to size runs against our interests in state led economic development, but what good is a tool that cannot do exactly what its master intends? Under a new cabinet planning board, the coordinating force of Japan's wartime economy in the 30s, we will march with Japan's economic resources towards its glorious ends. Our glorious ends. It went up, back up. Nice. Only 11%, not bad. And we have 249 MPs now. Ah, about a week left. Good. Where are we at now? Still minus 1%. That sucks. How about here? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, 40% is not bad, though. Because we'll lose 5%. Two and a half there. And then... Also, support it doesn't really matter too much. Public approval is what I care about the most. Oh, no. The premiership secured, of course. Also, well, not bad. You get more political power, but good news for once. Oh, the bill passed, too. Look at that. On to the next one. More government stability? Great. I just don't want to lose all that political power. I'm taking all the economy. Good news for once. As Kaya scanned his eyes over the last report, or latest report in a long pile, the cracks in his face reshaped themselves into a smile. For just for once, something had gone well. The numbers didn't lie. Efficiency was improving across the board. The military presence was finally driving so much needed discipline into the civilian administration and the armed forces themselves were finally beginning to be equipped and act as soldiers of Japan rather than as a mass of brutes with firearms. Japan's institutions at last were learning to put aside their feeble, pointless squabbles and move ahead in a unified direction. Things could soon be set right and the future could mean something once more. The economy could grow again, unlocking all kinds of new possibilities. Asia would be secure once more, be the threat from armies uh, peasants, corruption, rot, natural disorder, natural disaster, or nuclear heckfire. The sphere would stand ready. Ready together and united, Japan would finally be able to stand as a noble vanguard of the Pan-Asian cause, enveloping the East, and mutual cooperation and technical proficiency. And in doing so, the enemies would tremble. Kai, for his part, felt a little like trembling at this that very moment. He 
His doctor would surely say that now was no hour for a man of his age to work. Prime Minister, oh uh, no. Or not. But Kai knew that this was foolish when one considered all the work yet to do. His body and mind ached in equal measure, yes. But also blurred the satisfaction of a job well done. And may they continue to do so. Nice job. Cleanse of corruption. Bills. Cuz so we go through here. There's no bills here. There's missions. Start digging. There's a bill down here. So we can do uh, this bill and then do go move quick. Cleanse of corruption. Personnel is policy. Or so the saying goes. Simply integrating the various economic planning agencies and bureau into the new cabinet planning board will not drive away the agents of graft and political interests that have burrowed so deep into the empire's bali politic. Under Aoki Kazuo's watch, we will vet each individual candidate looking to a secure position in the new CPB and ensure that incorruptible men of loyal caliber are chosen to serve our interests. House board goes down, so be it. Yeah, not bad. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Oh, this is the only page we have open. Okay. Hey, he's getting slightly better. Less than 0.9%. Now it's in the negative 0.8%, basically. Central Europe, not bad. 10 billion in deficit is quite a bit. And we're still doing quite well here, too. Not bad. Cutting out the disease. A day of history was approaching. One where the first steps would be taken towards the purging of the rot, corruption, and decay that had plagued Japan for so long. It was evening, and Kaya stood with the Fanunda Naka, uh, along with a few other officials as they finalized the last elements of the anti-corruption operation. These are the administrators to focus on Kaya Finish, indicating on the list of names, each one appointed by Eno. Its influence will be broken tomorrow. All of them nodded, and Eno was by far the most corrupt official of their generation, and if they wanted to show they were serious about removing the corruption in the government, they had to start with his cronies. Easy to justify to the public, one of the officials said. And he was correct. This was not an operation that Kai was expecting public pushback on, at least at first. Kai then lowered his voice, almost to a conspiratorial level. A final note, do not overlook those who may be all opposed to our government. I expect that these those opposed to our agenda might find themselves in this net that we are casting. A few smirks around the room at the clear implication. Fununda, uh, Funuda, Naka, smarted Kai. I'll be sure to take that into account, Prime Minister. After that, they all departed for the night. Kai went to sleep, and while he slept, Fununda, Funada, Naka, and the security forces acted. The next morning, the papers were awash with bold headlines and frantic commentary. The scope of the bureaucratic purge was extensive, and many were excited at the development scene. The deep corruption finally started to be dealt with. Others were apprehensive, fearing it was a pretext of something worse. Yet all were watching Kai's next moves closely, because they all knew one thing for certain. This would not be the last purge. Nice. Poor, poor, poor. Terrible, terrible. Poor, but doesn't matter. And we have so much influence already. Look at that. 43%. Just beautiful. Iberia wants us... I, Iberia. 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 Wants us to release 10 more prisoners. An interesting message was found on his way to our government from Madrid. It's riddled with minor errors, endless verbosity, and seems to try and say the same message repeatedly. Phrased more like a legal document than a communication, it gives the impression that the writer cared more about closing up any potential loopholes as opposed to just giving a message. Whatever their motivations, the message is still still legible, for remarkably. Indonesia has imprisoned the garrison of the former Portuguese holding in Timor, which we liberated on our march southwards, and Iberia wants them back. We've been redacted too from our client state because allegedly we control their prisoner management. Ignoring this isn't true. For the sake of maintaining an honorable reputation, they'll need to be given a response. All that needs to be said is whether or not they'll be allowed to take them home. It's not a hard proposal to stomach, provided they provide transport. Of course, Indonesia might not approve, and strong arming them and releasing the prisoners may be more trouble than it's worth. No. Not at all. Who knows, maybe we can use them in the future. Negative growth. Huh. First time here, huh? 152 is not bad, though. And we built, oh, we just built more uh, admin offices. Admin offices? Yes, please. And more infrastructure, because it does help you with nominal growth, barely, but it does help out just at least a little bit, so. Eleven percent. Not bad. Please untangle the economy, and after that one, um, cleanse the corruption, of course. House support, spear support goes down. We'll get better admin program cost factor, but. Oh, state economic relief bill. Collapse of underground state unity. 241 out of 233, not bad so far. And if we win, when selected, we get more GDP growth, or just oh, GDP and GDP growth, spend almost a billion dollars, taxes will decrease, oh boy. 
But we set ourselves up to do really, really, really well here already, so. Oh, P, P, C, P, B. Poor relations, but oh well, who cares. Repair tools. No man would charge into battle without ammo, and so too would, in the world of policy can we not be left bereft of knowledge. The tools in a battle with the opposition of the data stati statistics, reams and reams of printed facts and figures pulled from the depths of the finance and commerce ministries archives that prove our point, that we are the only ones who can do best by the empire. We will support new think tanks and policy research with generous budget allocations. Anyone that dares to challenge us will be found sorely wanted for argument or an, an argument to prove that point. Spend more money, get more growth, get more inflation, and more admin efficiency monthly change, plus a fat one, and equipment goes up as well. Very nice. What's over here? Diet, point, no one cares. Eat a fat one, hardliners. Can we just get more growth? That's the most important thing we want. We just want more growth. Let's, it's getting slightly better. It still keeps going up. Oh, boy. Oh, and actually, we might upgrade our credit rating as well. It's only going up a plus one a month, but hey, you know, I'll still take it. Also, gladly take it. 40% still in the bed. 200. My gosh. 227 is insane. Looking all good here. The bill passes. Yay. Even more governments. We're very stable here. Start digging. By the nature of the Constitution, our Army and Navy have a privileged voice in politics at times both a benefit and a nuisance. But no organization's attention span is infinite and all-encompassing. In the years since the end of the Greater East Asian War, the military has had to minister to the safety and prosperity of the sphere at large, and reaping handsome profits in the process. A few more mining licenses in Korea surely would do no harm to them and to our own names in Tokyo. So we have that bill, and then we can do that one, yeah. Nice. Poor, terrible, terrible, poor, good. Oh, that's not good. 228. Ooh. That's not ideal. Um, conservatives? Yeah. Let's improve relations with the conservatives. We got more political power here, so we can do that. 232 is not bad. And technocrats? Um. I mean, you must be them, too. We want to keep it excellent. That's probably going to be probably really important for us to do. We're actually. Okay, thank God. We're actually growing. It's not much. I mean, it's almost nothing. But we're growing. We're growers, not showers. And doing this actually would probably cost more, but then you can get more taxable population. Not by much. But it'll give you more stability, too. Even though we don't really need that much more stability. But that's okay. Happy September, everybody. Only 11 billion in deficit. That's all. As economy is barely growing. But look at that. Oh, do it. That's not bad. Yeah, widespread corruption is good to get rid of. Functional admin system. Yeah, that's where it's at. 0 0.03. Actually, that's a lot better. I mean, it was almost like 0.4. Almost, probably, I think, 0.5, like, last episode. So, where we're at right now, not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Um, we're doing the land auction. Air auction? Tactical bombers? Sure, why not? Start digging a hole. A challenge request to the Japanese government. Following the success of the pan Asianist cause in securing and defeating the rebels in Yunnan, it's within this humble letter that we intend to request that the admin of the territory be handed to the Republic of China. As the, as the face of it, we, the Chinese government, might seem brazen. It is, of course, undeniable that the Japanese government provided us with invaluable support, both moral and material. The people of China wish to, therefore, return the favor. The Republican government understands that its Japanese counterpart is currently reeling from financial troubles caused by an international, internal crisis. It is our good faith desire to assist Japan by taking over the administrations of Xinjiang, Ji Kang and Yunnan. We will believe that is the best outcome for both warlords or <laughs> warlords worlds. China regains a territory that has been given so much trouble while saving the government of Japan from any expense. The main curve from the process of occupation. We hope to hear from you soon. Signed, Gao Zongwu. Give them what they ask. Give them what they deserve. Give them what they ask for. That's fine. Two forty-two is pretty good too. By any means, the cabinet planning board, by virtue of lacking competition, significantly significant powers to direct the functions of the economy at a whim. But whim is a precious and intangible thing, and to base the authority of our program solely around it is hardly a sustainable solution. We must enshrine the primacy of the cabinet planning board with their men in his head and national policy making in law, so that none can question the provident providence of its decisions. The Dow will surely see reason. Bureaucratic cabinet planning board establishment an act. Nice. 242 is pretty good though. Continue sideline them. This goes up a little more. Cordial and alley. Nice. Oh, research budgets. Oh. Becomes leader free India. Alright. Line relations would increase by 5%, which is fine. Whatever. I'm not going to increase the relations. Nope. 8.7. Hey, that's quite a bit better. It actually shot up a little bit. 
Hey, go go figure. That's shot down a little bit and then shot back up. But we're not doing that much shooting here, are we? Actually, how's this looking? It's 100% effectiveness, reducing your inflation by point. Uh, well, 0.71%. It's not. Is that really worth it? You get up to 3% total reflection inflation. Oh, Imperial flag. Ryaka, huh? Um, honestly, the whole inflation thing here. <clears throat> counting your pennies, it would be better to do fresh off the presses. Because you get up to 1% growth. We'll see what happens with inflation. If it gets, if it doesn't get any better, it goes above 1%, then there's no point doing it. Just get more growth. That's, that's more important to do that one. But move quick. <clears throat> have to do by any means necessary. Nice. 248 supporters. Nice. Oh, and we this one too. So give it a couple months. If it doesn't work out well for us, then we'll just switch it around. By 66. If it doesn't change by 66, then we'll go back to grow. Move quick. Speed and flexibility are all important in this nation of decadent stagnation. To ensure that a counterattack from Ikeda and the part of its mainstream faction can be prevented, the Home Minister shall be encouraged to speed up the elimination of our targets within the administration. No price is too high when it comes to the stability of our nation. Offers from Rome. In months, recent months following the Italian democratization, we've been approached by Italian envoys with overtures of friendship and cooperation. We have enjoyed warm relations with the Italians ever since the break of the Nazis in the 50s. The latest development presents a golden opportunity to bring the Italian Empire firmly to our sphere. With control over the Suez, dominance of the Mediterranean, and a colonial empire that stretches from Tunis to the Horn, Italy would make a valuable addition to the co-prosperity sphere, turning this sphere into a truly global organization. Furthermore, the effects of getting an ally right on the borders of the Reich cannot be overstated. Every available effort shall be made to bring the Italians into the co-prosperity sphere, unless this opportunity to slip from our grasp or worse fall into the hands of our enemies. Give me the ambassador. Oh, crap. I knew we had safe political power, but to get everything done here and do well... Kind of sucks. Stringing it along. Kai released another deep drawn outside. His chest heavy or heaving with discontent as the rhythmic drumming of his sore digits filled the room which had previously been bloated with dreadful silence. Oh crap, Indonesia war. That's not good. His eyes hovered back and forth across the desk, squinted as he lifted his plan towards the bridge of his nose, feeling the weight of the day's chaos finally spilling over upon his own weary shoulders. The military. Oh, how he had courted them with lavish gifts and silver tongue promises. Yet it seemed by the incessant deafening ringing of the phone seated across from them that neither had been enough to satiate the ambition and worry of the generals and admirals alike reaching over. Kai unlocked the phone receiver from its crimson resting place, heaving it upon his ears with the strain of a man urging, lifting a weight much heavier than he could bear to lift. Prime Minister Kai, I'm afraid there's something we must discuss. I'm sure you've heard the unrest within the building. His Minister of the Army, Hori, Hori Aizo, rambled on, but Kai slowly grew deaf to his words, letting the receiver press to his ear drop and clatter across the desk. Kai knew that Aizo had come here to ask, and he knew what his answer would be. No deliberation was needed to assess the Army and the Navy's ambitions needed to be placated with another carrot on a fresh stick. Grant them an expansion of the mounting efforts in Korea. Give them enough, but not all of it. We still need something to bait them if they elect to reach deeper into my pockets, Kai curtly responded. A venomous distaste in his tones he snatched the battered receiver from its place upon his desk, cruelly interrupting Aizo with his order. Kai did not wait a response, simply ushering goodbye before slamming the phone back down with a flick of his wrist. Perhaps I should call him back. A meeting may be in order. Well, cr oh my god, it costs political power. Indonesia, one of the most valued member states in the sphere due to its excellent strategic position and abundance of natural resources, has fallen into anarchy. While our position so far has been thoroughly in identified with the Sukarno administration, Dai Honai has strongly recommended the Prime Minister take a more direct and aggressive approach to the Indonesia war since. It would be wise for us to consider means of intervention militarily, using our assets in the region and, if need be, the deployment of domestic assets. Though it should be noted that intervention would place a further strain on our resources and that we should, should we fail to deliver on our promises. This will lead to negative political consequences down the line. Send more military advisors. Send infantry equipment. Send aircraft. Increase conscription. Send officers. Expand special forces will get you nothing in a launch an offensive. We'll spend the political power for it. We will. Three, huh? Nice. Send the Marines. They're not great, but they'll work. They'll do well. Especially under Nishi here. Uh, at least we've got another civil war to fight. And Indonesia, or not Indonesia, Indonesia's on fire. But, death of Ho Chi Minh, at least the Philippines, hopefully, will do really well for us. Hopefully, they become, I would say, an industrial juggernaut, but like stronger. Economically, at least. So, uh, how many planes can we send down here? 30 right there, 400 some, send. Actually, you get down here too. 
And you guys are here too as well. Uh, go 200. You guys can hold. And go up there. I actually want one group to go right here. Go there. When you go from here, go there. Nice. Jakarta? Very nice. Good. Finally, we can let the killing commence. Well, since they're dead anyways. No point going that direction, right? Oh, wait, what? Whoa! How are they doing so well down here? Holy crap! Oh, we have more production units too! A little bit of lag, but whatever. Do we need more military factories? Hmm, honestly, not really. So, let's, I'm, I don't mind boosting up like... Uh, Consumer spending, even though I already, I think I already maxed it out earlier off screen. Yeah, I maxed it out already, which is pretty nice. 0.74%, yeah. Hey, 1.5%, hey, you know what? I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling better. We might have to be depressed, but at least the kind of is not so depressed. Everyone else is, though. Hey, look at that. Good job, guys. We're going to finish this area off first and then move up to this island up here, too. And we got him. Reports from Washington. Well, we may be going to move the Italians into our alliance. We have re recently received word that the U.S. is doing much the same, hoping to bring the Italians into the OFM. This cannot be allowed to pass. Italian entry into the OFM would be a major boon to the Americans, granting them a foothold in Europe and heralding a massive victory for the so-called free world. Every available resource must be used to bring the Italians into the co-prosperity sphere, or at the very least, to prevent the Americans from bringing them into the OFM. We can all let the Americans one-up us. Yeah, I'm not going to be worried about this too much, because I don't think it's going to be that difficult for us, but you never know. This is going to be a little more concerning, but we should do okay here, too. Oh, how are we doing down here? Doing alright? Doing some good damage? God, I love Cass. I just... Yes. Oh! Vyaka's very strong for some reason. I don't understand why. Oh, don't tell me it started. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. Good. Well, the American Swan Song. The U.S. and the lapdogs in the OFN have made several overtures towards the Italians to woo them into their alliance, including offers of technology, favorable access to security resources. We're going to take more actions to bring Rome to our side, or at the very least prevent those dastardly Americans from bringing them into our sphere. There, right, the ambassador. Well, there's nothing, we have no options here. And when it replaces America, when we see that Japan's doing well with the Italians, we have no options there too, so I don't see anything here we can do. There you go. Nice. Just gun them all down, everybody. Just gun them down. Ah, 1.5% of growth. 11 billion deficit, you know what, whatever. The call of history. The greatest leaders were ones who did not shy away from risks. These men did not shy away from the possibility of failure. These men were not content with the status quo, but actively sought to change it to their interests, even if they ultimately crashed and burned. History did not reward the meek, it did not reward the safe, it rewarded the bold, it rewarded the decisive. It was time to be bold. It was time to be decisive. But he, he had attempted to do everything to avoid this point of no return, but now Kaio is convinced that there was nothing more than it could be done. The technocratic agenda needed to be pushed through by enemies necessary. The shackles needed to be taken off the cabinet planning bureau, so they could intervene in the Japanese economy as necessary. The roadblocks and opposition had persisted long enough, and his hand, delivered to him only hours ago, he had a bill to do just that, a bill which would pass Fukuda Takeo, and the technocrats firmly control the economy, a bill that painted a very large target on his back, as this amounted to a dramatic shakeup of existing power structures. The reformists. Uh, who would view this as a coup. <clears throat> and conservatives and Kitoites would see this as threatening their myriad of interests. There would be a significant opposition from all factions, uh, at least large swaths of them. It was a dangerous pick fight to pick, but Kai judged it, it was time to fight. This would be a deciding moment in his career. This would be an act that would make or break his government. High stakes, high rewards, and it all had led to this. It was time to see the alliance's friends and actions he had taken would be enough to see this through. Only one way to find out. Oh, crap. Complex, on the diet. Ooh, 248 out of 233. Yeah, we're going to get it, my friends. Yes! Admin efficiency gets better, more centralized control, more technical faction increase, GDP growth, political power, three more admin offices, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Offer concessions, primacy, no! Go, go yourself, hardliners. Um, and then, crush dissenters. It's saying within the constituent nations of Japan, especially the peoples of Korean Peninsula and the island of Taiwan, has recently surged, while the threats to Japan are minimal. A rebellion within our nation is unacceptable. Local police are certainly well equipped, especially for a mission of this scale, but may not pull through entirely on their own. We may choose to use military units and their company police. However, such measures may prove overzealous. So we'll decrease House of, uh, house of Peer support. Reformist power goes down as well. But overall, not bad. 
Cutting out the rot, perhaps the Yoko Sankai thought themselves immune to the crusading zeal of Kaya's anti-corruption act, as those members of the citizenry accused of degeneracy and beliefs counter the Japanese spirit are rounded up into waiting cars by the Toko. The YSK looked on smugly, that preening careful illusion was smashed on an ornate mirror meeting a sledgehammer. Politicians making their way back to their homes are apprehended by Toko agents, pushed into the same cars as their civilian counterparts. Probes launched by the Home Ministry and Toko revealed a great deal about the members of the Yoko Sankai, rooting out Kitoites, reformists, and conservatives. As the inferno of the anti-corruption act sweeps across Japan, the press, so quick to praise the purification of society, I began to succumb to a creeping doubt. No one is safe from Kai and his ideological club. Brute force and political warfare now serves to keep both the people and the government accountable and properly intimidated. The purge has not been taken lying down, however, and this form of political violence has raised concerns within Kai's own party. A showdown between the Yokos and Kai and Kai is nearing, and none can rightly say who will emerge victorious. A lighter touch is waste on degenerates, no matter the class. Weighty acclaim. As soon as the final vote tally was announced, Kai could hear the rest of the Diet Chamber erupt in a cacophony, with the roar of the technocratic factions just drowning out the jeers of the Yokos and Kai's internal opposition. Kaya heard and did not see the tumult. Having risen to his feet to offer the customary deep bow to the entire chamber, a warm wave rushed into his heart, a surge of gratitude. Given the opposition to giving the technocrats sweeping power to remake Japan under CPP, Kaya had been counting votes nervously for days, stealing himself against the worst outcome. Now his day's worth of anxiety unknotted themselves in Kaya's stomach. Aoki Kazuo crossed over to Kaya's chair before patting Kaya on the shoulder. It's done, Kaya. Now we've got everything we need to put our policies into practice. I'm sure it won't be that simple, Kaya laughed, but it's a first step. Leviathan awakens in a letter from Nanjing to our Asian brothers. A unique situation has developed as of late in southwestern region. We thought it our duty, as a proud member of the East Asian Coal Prosperity Sphere, to inform you, your government and most royal emperor of the nature of the situation. Our most recent intelligence suggests that it, an insane criminal by the name of Long Yun has escaped from prison and along with a small handful of bandits occupied the Jinan territory. Despite lack of equipment, popular support, and military experience, these disorganized brigands have won a baffling victory and deposed General Liu Han. His current whereabouts are unknown. We wish to make it clear that the Republic of China army is more than capable of crushing a feeble horde, but it would be foolish to disregard preparation for it in, in its entirety. As such, we humbly request a temporary expansion of the Chinese military to crush the inconsequential nuisance. Additionally, we will transfer oversight to the remaining warlords to Japanese authorities to ensure continued peace and prosperity. To victory. Legislative Yuan of the Republic of China. How much trouble could a few bad ends be? Also, we are trying to get Italy on our side. Um, obviously, it probably won't go very well for us. If it doesn't go well, then we'll just kind of I'll replay this slightly off screen. Or maybe we'll just cheat and give us some political power because I want Italy. I mean, that'd be really cool if we got Italy. We probably won't get Italy. I want Italy. I really want flipping Italy. <clears throat> but we already spent some political power on them, so overall, we still have 243 people here. Not bad. Uh, but we're doing the Crusher Simmons as well. If you want to reread that, please go right ahead. But. Baptism by fire. The elements within Japan preventing our progress have been curbed. Popular dissent has been quenched, and the political establishment has been tamed. With the assurance that nobody remains to pull the rug out from under us, it's finally time to act on our Prime Minister's vision for the nation. I hope to God we get more political power, because this is looking so bad. It's just so bad, man. It's just so bad. Uh, but over here, 1.8% growth. I can get I can get used to that. I can definitely get used to that. Oh, they're spreading out, which is not good. There goes Yugra. Uh, please do not go in there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, crap. Do not encircle us, please. Come on. Let these guys spread down here so we can actually kill these guys off, maybe. Because those tanks are going to be very difficult to kill off. Very, 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 very difficult. Not today. By controlling the Imperial Universities through superintendents and program funding, Prime Minister, our plan to secure the future of the Empire can finally be complete. Sheena finished his speech enthusiastically, expecting a yes from Kai like he always did. He knew well enough that Kai needs a hardliner support to make the majority, and rejecting such support is a risk that seasoned politicians like Kai would never take. With Kai's premiership hinged on him, there was even a moment where Sheena envisioned himself as the one making the calls, and to him, Kai has been become more of a puppet than the man he owes his allegiance to. No, Kai slammed his palm on the desk, emphasizing the finality of this decision. I'm not considering this bill, at least for today. For a moment, Sheena could not believe his ears, but why, sir? This act is a logical next step towards the final goal, and we've already set the stage. Ikeda called yesterday. He said if we push your regime further, he will do everything in his capacity to topple us. I suppose you do not wish to learn what that means by everything in his capacity, do you? But sir, if we don't push now, well, they'll be given the opportunity to rally and support and recover. My decision is final. Perhaps I do need the help from you and Kishi to maintain my majority, but remember this, Sheen. You're nothing without me, either. Please push down, please push down, because finding those tanks is going to be impossible. Even though Free Indonesia is looking pretty bad, to be honest with you. And we win the issue, great! 
Following weeks of intense negotiations between Americans, Japanese, and Italian officials in Rome, we have received word that the Italian government is receptive to the Japanese proposal at hand and will align themselves closer to the Empire of Japan on the current issue. In Tokyo, Japanese diplomats breathe a sigh of relief as Italy draws one step closer to the sphere and their historic alliance, while their counterparts at the State Department in Washington curse under their breath at the setback. In Rome, government ministers nod solemnly for themselves, knowing that their decision will play a pivotal role in deciding the future of the Italian Empire for generations to come. The battle for Italy continues, as the old fan and co prosperity sphere await the next summons from Rome to discuss an extra on their agenda. For Japan and the Emperor, my friends. Of course. As we're doing more air doctrine, because we can use that. Actually, since you're here anyways. Um let's make sure we have two there. Do we have the other planes around here too? I thought we had more planes. Um uh, did I send them did I send them away? Hold on. What are you guys doing here? Oh we got rid of the car oh, planes. There you go. Fine. They're very tight lipped right now. Very tight. Oh no, you guys are fine. You're on. You're. No, 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 you're not. Anything that can help reduce the cost for now, just a little bit, even just a little bit. Oh, you're up here. Oh, there you are. Oh, there's you guys. Fighter wings. Uh, I don't mind keeping you there. Oh, they're right here. My bad. There you go. Lots of extra support. We love it. Anything else? 243 is still pretty good. And house support, 37.5 is not bad. We got plenty of house support. Public, public support is okay. Bathrooms by fire. Yeah. If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. Yeah. So, what about Italy? They're closer to us, which is nice. I don't want to spend that much political power, though. Hey, we got it. Nice. Good job, guys. Let them break down through here so we can actually encircle them and kill them all that way. Because right now, we don't have enough divisions of. Uh, also, we get, get, did get a higher credit rating. We're at Prime now. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. So, uh, 6%. These helicopters are not bad. Are oh, these guys 20 combo with? They're only 16, huh? Can we go elites? Make them even bigger and better? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. A request for material. Our Chinese allies approach us with a request for weapons and ammo. The insurrection burning in the southwest has engulfed the region more quickly than any had expected, as such a government has found itself caught on the back foot. With a lack of a strong native arms industry, it falls to us to provide material assistance. It won't hurt to send a few guns. We don't have the political power to send you guns. I'll give you guns in exchange for, like, political power. But that's all we can really do. Let the... Let's, let's go. 3v3. Can we actually win with air support? <sighs> Dangerous. Desperate demands. Doesn't look like it. That sucks. If that's the case, um, we might just abandon this area first. And actually go somewhere else. And finish them off here, maybe. You know, that's, that's kind of a... That's, a, that's an idea. Let them spread out first. I mean, that might just be the best thing to do. Protesting in Taiwan is, has, was a dangerous affair, or at least an unpleasant one. Ji uh, Jai Li was one protester in a crowd of hundreds of Taiwanese citizens as they stood outside the government buildings. Rows of police guarded the buildings, clad in riot gear and all Japanese. No one knew where the right line was between protesting and threatening. It seemed that it depended upon the whims of the police. Jai Li had bruises on her arms and legs when the police had used batons. Tear gas was deployed, or deployment was regular. A few were beaten worse. A few times she'd seen men in different uniforms working or advising the police officers. Some said they were Kenpai Tai or Toko, but she didn't know for sure. Despite it, they kept coming back day after day. They didn't have another choice. The Asutocrats had destroyed and ruined many of them, and they weren't even asking for anything unreasonable. They just wanted help, relief. They were part of the Empire, were they not? So why should they not get some help? Some of those within them were protesting Japanese rule of Taiwan itself, but she and many others here were just trying to get some help. Rumors traveled among them, and there were some saying that Korea was also experiencing a protest wave, though was being met with a similar response. She supposed it could be worse. They could have sent in the military to break it up. The police weren't pleasant, and they weren't shy about throwing fists and slurs at anyone who came too close, but they didn't feel their lives were in danger. But as the days went on, more of them lost hope that anything would change, but she kept coming back. Even with the bruises, slurs, tear gas, and beatings, she came back, and when less and less people appeared each day, she, she did it because she had no choice. She did it because she had to hope something might just change. Actually, you know what? We're going to come down here first. Just so we can like encircle and kill these guys off. Possibly. Possibly. And then the premiership is secure. There were many who doubted that the te uh, technocrat, a bureaucrat, could ever scale the heights of politics in the wake of the Asuda collapse, coming out on top of the political quagmire birthed by the fall of the Prime Minister Eno. How wrong they were. Everyone has a price, if only it could be quantified. And Prime Minister Kaya excels at just that. The nobles, the Yoko Sankai politicians, the reformers, military, some show their hands too early and others too late. Under Prime Minister Kaya, politics as a solved game, its actors dancing to honeyed promises or cowed by the nightstick. 1.9%? Nice. Even though deaths are still pretty bad, but whatever. 
Uh, happy 66, everybody. Let's get some better guns. More stuff to attack for the army. Oh, please don't get this over here, ding dongs. Please, 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 please. Send these guys over here, too. Oh, actually, you stay there. You know what? Screw it. You guys go here. Um, actually, I want to circle that division, so we gotta go over here, too. Peace conference is over. Who died? Someone in Russia? It can't be Indonesia. There's no way it's Indonesia. Oh. Wait. South African War. Union of South Africa finally defeating the oath and provisional government of the Congo and their allies. Uh, they're all in the OFN, so... Huh. Okay. Oh, crap. We don't have enough... God dang it. We didn't select a level of investment just because we don't have enough. And the South African War. That's nice for them. Actually, who won there? Cold War. Total victory in South Africa for the U.S. Well, good job, America. Stupid enemies. <laughs> There you go. Can you actually win there? You might be able to. At least encircling their division would be very helpful. Come on, come on, come on. Oh! 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 Mapping! These maps are all wrong here, especially on Sulawesi. If you compare to these reports, it says the local resistance have all closed up shop in the south and now are residing within this portion of the island, mainly concentrated around the northeast. That'll have to be corrected, but the worst maps are the ones on Papua. Not that that matters. Not at least for my garrisons. Have these ones fixed. I've got some relics on my own to update. Brushing away his aide after the man had tucked away the five meter long maps underneath his shoulder, another one of his aides entered the room, facing straight towards B Botam. General Botam, Lieutenant Governor Hiroto, is booked in for this meeting. His meeting. Should I send him in? I'm ready for him. It hadn't been less than a minute until Hiroto entered the doorway, dressed sharply in his army uniform. The man had his own maps tucked underneath his shoulder, plus a briefcase held in his right hand. He sharply saluted and made himself seated. Those are the maps I managed to draw up, like you asked for a week ago, Hiroto stated, punctual as ever. And this is a documentation of the three wartime governors of Sulawesi and all of the changes they made to the state over their tenure. Tons of this crap is nearly useless, but some, some of these notes are actually valuable, I hope. I hope so too, Hiroto said, thinking to himself out about the odd connections between himself and a bureaucrat. Perhaps he should employ a couple... Uh, <clears throat> Stay tuned, Hiroto. We'll add the maps to together in private. However, I have found the need to retract my predecessor's orders for the garrison. It's time for Indonesia to return to progress. One step at a time. More government stability, better public approval, more faction power increase, more stability, and more political power? Yes. And now we can do this too. Great. Public approval goes down? No, thank you. This is our influence. We probably won't do that one. Um, let's see what we can do. We're going to keep political power tier too. So 255. Oh my gosh, 255. We did great here. We did great. Good job, Indonesia. So Karno would never do anything bad to us, right? 1.9% growth, not bad. Okay, so I did say if 66, I forgot about this. Um, 0.74. I think we're gonna go back up to fresh off the presses. Yeah, I mean, less than 1% inflation is not worth it. Compared to, if you get 1% growth here, you might as well go for the growth, right? So. Oh, increased nationwide police presence. That's gonna go to continue going down. Poor, terrible, terrible, poor. Oh, that's not good, but whatever. Mm. Sideline them. I want us to continue sideline them, but we can wait. Yeah, Bjork is very strong. Ridiculous strong. Oh, but they did lose against Finland, huh? Basically, they lost. Basically, not bad. Happy March, everybody. New month, new loss, maybe? 1.9%. 1.9% still. <laughs> All right. SB artillery, light aircraft, helicopters, air doctrine. It's all coming along. Airsoft. Good job, guys. You guys can hold, and since you're in Shonan, we kind of know where that's at already, so. Not bad. Not bad at all. Keep your PP for now. We'll be fine, hopefully. American proposal. Um, given this issue, mild importance, which is level 2. Um, compromise compelled. The cabinet meeting has been up, but up until that point, routine. Important, of course, the ongoing pacification in Taiwan and Korea were of paramount national interest, but routine. That was until the secretary entered hurriedly. A breach of protocol. <clears throat> all, that all new meant something serious had occurred. As Kai's face darkened, the secretary murmuring into his ear. That certainly only grew, and it was serious indeed. The draft of the Higher Education Regulation Act, with its detailed clauses on the standardization of proper political outlooks within the state's education, had been leaked. A small publication had seen it first, but had rapidly spread nationwide. And the public response had first been swift, severe, and overwhelmingly negative. Already, there's talks of mass demonstrations and walkouts on university campuses from Kyushu to Tokohu. Immediately, Kaya knew that a delicate decision would have to be made. The bill cannot be withdrawn. Shino would never accept such an action, and so it would have to be presented. But that matter, manner of presentation offered a choice. 
He can support it directly to mollify Sheena and the Hardliners, of course. Or he can work against them, forcing Sheena himself to argue for him. And that permits the Technocrats to vote with the internal freedom, a move much more likely to end the in the Bell's defeat. We made his choice a moment later. Uh, back to Bell as is. Ooh, 30 more Technocrats. Do we, do we need more support? We already have 250 support, so we don't really need more support. Kaya declares a free vote among the Technocrats. The influence will decrease. Relations will decrease. Negative 31 more technocrats. Oh, oh, oh crap. Okay, that's not good. Mm. Mm. We have 250. If we fail, we get minus 20. If we win, we get plus 10. Oh. No. Influence will increase or decrease. We need 10. Mm-hmm. Enforce faction unity. Increases the power by a little bit. We can do that. Or do we come down here? Oh, we can't do this one now. Mmm. Keto whites. Five more members. Two more members. Four more members. Holy crap. Nine. We need ten, so... 243. Not bad. It costs us political power, which I do not want to spend political power, but... 243 out of, two, uh, out of that much. 74%. I we saw, saw her here earlier. 85% government uh, stability. If anything, I think the government stability, like having uh, like a high amount that we currently have, it should be higher than this, right? It should be higher. Like we get more political power. We should get something out of it, right? 0 0.02. That's actually really good. Holy crap. Holy smoky feathers. Hey, 1.44 again. Nice. Nice. Bell on the diet. Great. Public approval. Oh. Ooh, public approval, though. I'm glad we got it a little higher earlier. Oh, my goodness. Overall, not bad, though. Not bad at all. To save her PP for now. Growth is 1.956. Could be worse. Uh, growth is point added point two. All right, so be it. So be it. So be it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Are still building more roads up. Let's get some more prison systems. Monthly population, maybe. Uh, what is Kita? Hospitals, huh? Yeah, hospitals. Let's go two. And where's this one? High on. And this is schools here, huh? Go three. Because we love them. We love them so much. Come on. We want those millions of dollars, please. Ah, I'm reckoning with it. We must redouble our efforts. That sucks. Best of for Italy. When selected, we gave one more point for the next issue. We're going to have two points for the next issue. Okay. Max invested. I want to get Italy. I guess we'll get this one too. We're, I, I'm feeling pretty successful for this so far. Alright, so now, Max. Uh, increase our influence. Yeah. Just do that one already. Alright, so this one's good. And we won quite a, all the Civil War so far, so. Uh, the Premiership secured. We gotta wait for this one, I guess, you know. We get more political power here too. Plus 75 is nice. So, when's it gonna be done? Oh, in a week. That's not bad. Happy April, everyone. Hey, 2.3%. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, and our growth is better than our debt interest, so... You know, could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. Alright, and here we go. American proposal. There. That shows us to give us the maximum in importance, which is level 5. Well, god dang it. Bill passes. Great one. Well, approval goes down, so be it. Nice. Significantly decrease American influence. Invest diplomats. Eh, we'll see. The Premiership is secured, my friends. So where are we at? The curtains drop. Not <laughs> terrible, but 3.5 influence. The sounds of papers fluttering and ceaseless chatter radiate. From the pristine halls of the Diet, shouts and bitter arguments still emerging from within, as the whole building seemed to shake with the thunder of discontent born from Kai's tumultuous gambit here. It achieved something which would cement him within the minds of every bureaucrat that had crossed from his front to push through his will. The bell had coasted through the inferno like a boat along the river Styx, which is a great band, dodging death in the Diet just as Kai and his cabinet had worked so hard to ensure. The Higher Education Regulation Act was alive, breathing with all its bells and whistles glimmering with a sparkling approval. Finally, closed the door behind him. The thundering 
staggering, winding down into distant wine as you step forward, his polished boots clattering across the floor, which bore the same illustrious shine and the, sh the shine. Kaya saw his future, the future which he had fought tooth and nail to secure, his ascent guaranteed within the walls of the Diet and the greater the Japanese society as a whole. This was the greatest test which his government had to weather, and he had passed. Beyond this triumph, all he could envision was a spotlight shining down upon him, and the associates which had remained so faithful in their tireless task to cement his will upon Japan. Turning now, he reached to the grasp the handle of the door before him, exhaling deeply as he felt the stress which had consumed him flutter from his, between his lips. And then a smile curled up upon his face like the Grinch. But he was no Grinch, for he was here to save Japan, not steal Christmas. 2.3%? Not an extremely high deficit, too? Inflation is going up higher, but whatever. It is what it is. I just want to get Italy in. Let's see. Significantly decreased American influence? It's not bad. We know a lot of political power, but a farewell letter. My students, colleagues, and friends. As you may be aware, yesterday I was informed by the superintendent that my service to Kyoto Imperial University was forcibly terminated, pursuant to the Higher Education Act. By the time you see this letter, I've ended my life voluntarily for a cause. Please, before you weep my departure from the tangible world, heed my words and take a moment to think about it, as I've always asked you to. Since the passing of the Act, 23 professors at our university have been removed from the position, needless to say. The views were incompatible with the path of our current administration. They did not nothing but follow the pursuit of academic freedom yet. Their acts out of intellectual curiosity, and just as for the masses earned them cold on forgiving fists from the home ministry. A friend of mine, and maybe yours, Professor Kiyoyama Iowa, was one of those that lost their tenure. He was a sole breadwinner of his family and a firm believer of Asian co prosperity sphere through equality and fraternity between nations, yet not only did he lose his job, he also received a hefty, hefty fine from the Toko for unpatriotic acts. In what world would a just, kind man like him suffer for this? In what world could a man be punished for siding with good? In what world could calling for fraternity between peoples of Asia be a crime? Well, there's little I can do in the tangible world, I hereby leave my worldly inheritance to his family, and I sincerely plead to you all to assist innocent scholars like him if it isn't a burden. As a humble student of Zen Buddhism, I know well enough that ending my life prematurely is, no, is in no agreement with Buddhist teaching, and I strongly advise you to, against pursuing my path. I believe, however, that my death can be a, a benefit to you as a message and a plea to our government. It may, it, if my failure to achieve nirvana can bring forth an air of academic freedom and equality among people of the sphere, then so be it. Namu shakam oni butsu sign. Nishitani Kaiji. Oh boy. I want to spend the PP, but. Mm, we got to antagonize Wall Street. But I'll probably redo this off screen. I just want to get up over here. He's from the Southwest. War burns on the Southwestern horizon, where the rims of the Chinese world ends. Oh boy. The politicians, diplomats, and media have collectively decided to dub this conflict the Western Insurrection. The Gao cabinet has refused any attempts from Japan to mediate the crisis, seeking to prove their mettle on the battlefield. Word from Nanjing travels like whispers to the Japanese tent. We do not wish to burden the Japanese government, it says, a note tinged by the tone of terror and excitement. Jap Chinese matters need to stay in Chinese hands. With the cap Japanese uh, diplomatic efforts rebuffed, the government cannot pursue the course of intervention for now. The Imperial Japanese Army, with its assortment of hot-headed generals and officers, are the loudest voices in favor. The, quiet, the Navy quietly nods its assent, however. The Prime Minister pretends not to hear these complaints. The Chinese are doing the same thing, after all. If the opportunity presents itself, however, the Chinese government may be persuaded to part with its sovereignty in return for their survival. Until then, the government shall undertake to silence the dissent within its ranks. If China needs help later, it must pay, and pay they shall. Wow, look at all that political power gap. Lunch for the Cabinet. Oh, boy. 255, though. Kaya looked around the table. Aoki, Fukuda, Kawashima, and Funanda. Funada. The men were currently discussing political matters over lunch in order to best make use of their time. After taking a sip of water, Kaya spoke. I'd like to thank you all for your hard work in stabilizing Japan according to your best designs. Kaya allowed himself a pause as the table gave a small round of applause. Once it had quieted down, he continued, with the establishment no longer breathing down our necks, we can finally discuss how to remake Japan's economy. As Kaya continued to discuss his plans, he was met by approval from his colleagues, especially Aoki and Fukuda, with, who both nodded along approvingly. After concluding his impromptu speech and yet another round of applause, Kaya leaned back in his chair while the rest of the cabinet chatted among themselves, discussing the various plans Kaya talked about. Kaya took a deep breath from the constant analysis of the situation. Indeed, or instead of worrying about the implications these recent events could have for the future, Kaya was focused on what they lay ahead. The real work, the dirty work, the reconstruction could finally begin, and Kaya found himself excited at the prospect. The goal for this excitement was simple. He could finally see his goal. He could finally see success and retirement in the distance. He just had to get there. Political favors, emergency reforms. Oh, crap. Oh, rapidly. Oh, my God. Rapidly improve. Oh, but I want Italy in the sphere. And political favors, too. Oh, my gosh. Expand the Aurelio port. Oh, my gosh. There's just so much here. The Western Insurrection, send weapons and funds. 
Uh, should Guao Wang Zhu's regime prove incapable, we may intervene in the instruction to protect one of our empire's most valuable subjects. You know what? Um, it's not bad. You know what? We're gonna do this one. Hurt the Americans a little bit more. Holy crap! They're moving fast. Oh, how did we get here? Oh, also we have this too. Wait, we survived. Oh wait, what the heck? Destroy them and start anew. Oh, Kishi. We survived. Before our attempts in the political maneuver, faction enemies and rivals caused chaos within our ranks and threatened our coalition's existence. However, after our successful attempts, we are now capable enough to withstand their pitiful gestures or jests. Leaving the snake pit of the Imperial Diet behind is now time to set our eyes on observing the horrendous condition Japan is currently in. On close inspection, we see the several problems menacing Japan, from the daily tussles within our own economy to the intense stare down between our armed forces, as we pledge before we shall solve these issues. One way or another. Uh, let's see, restructure our system. Oh, that's not bad. Influence will continue to decrease. The military's friendly rival. Ooh. Decrease the support of the Imperial Army. Bonus for, well, we already finished the land auction. I should have waited to do that stuff. Whatever. Um, floating air bases. Greatly increases maximum investment and minimal investment. Um, organization, division, recovery rate. That's not bad. Renew our armor. I've never seen this screen before. This is awesome. Military industrial complex, you lose daily political power. I really don't want to go this way at all. <laughs> you lose even more political power. Oh, but you more growth, but still. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Soldiers control. Military professionals begin to improve. Not bad. Um, ships rule the way. It's not bad. In the Emperor's name. That well, sounds pretty good, too. So this is the entire focus tree. That's cool. What is on this side? Destroy them and start a new. A new economy. Hmm. Oh, that's not, that's not bad. Growth increase by 0.1% is okay. Uh, economic consolidation. Patience is a virtue. Oil sufficiency. Break their backs. Oh, more political power. Ooh, that's nice. Reignite the rivalry. It's a gambit. It was even more political power. A new order? I love the new order. I play it way too much. The performance base withered. Economy for the state. State for the economy. 14 hour workday. Not bad. Huh. But, looks like we were forced to go down this way. Restructure the system. The Japanese civil service has been in operation for close to a century. Established to run his Imperial Majesty's Empire and carrying out the government's policy initiatives. However... After two exhaustive wars and decades of struggle from within and without, much of it remains consists of dusty bush nose careers and opportunistic hounds. It is time we draw the knife once again. Aoki Kazuo has finally gathered his plans and working alongside the Prime Minister will rigorously review the com composition of the political establishment. Mass firings and forced retirements alongside plenty of promotions for the worthy can draw us closer to the restoration of new bureaucratic dominance or the political machinations or political machine administering the continent spanning empire which we get more power, power, influence, and in search of new ideas. Asahi Shimbun. Special issue. The protest against the Higher Education Act remains. Heated as of today. This week has been bloody props. People around the Empire losing their loved ones to the hands of the police, Toko and Ken Tai. Past last week, this highly controversial law led to mass terminations and shortage or funding shortage falls across the Imperial University system, particularly in the social sciences. With the uh, suicide of Professor Nishitani Kaiji of Kyoto, Imperial University in protest, nationwide student riots were ignited to the extent of no control. At this fateful moment, PM Kaya ordered an all-out suppression by force, followed by mass prosecution, killing 105, injuring over 4,800, and convicting over 5,100. One attorney who defended a group of students reported, I was not permitted to present my defense. It took the judge five minutes to sentence 20 students to eight months in prison. Never has this nation be seen brutal suppression against its populace like this. And needless to say, Kai's actions was met with attacks from all sides, including Diet members who initially supported the bill. Even conservatives led by a, rep a representative, Ikeda Masanosuke, and reformers led by representative Takagi Sukichi, put aside their differences, making a joint announcement that any bill submitted to Kai by Kai would not and never would gain their support. Following this was another statement co-signed by 25 prefectural governors declaring that local law enforcement would not comply with any arrest order associated with the act. Facing this unprecedented opposition against the government, PM Kaya and his cabinet inst insisted that the act is a success. The government further ordered to replace all the prefectural governments and police commissioners who refused to cooperate and also unseen in the history of the empire. Despite the government's bold move, however, it would take a miracle for the technocrats to regain their footing in the diet, with the future of Kaya's premiership largely uncertain. A new dawn and a river blood. Fueled by innocent blood, the fire of baptism burns bright. But if you like to be about Italy choosing your future, please go ahead. A new dawn. Wait. Reformist relations will increase by 15%, but conservative relations will increase by 15 Alright, so we're still in the, in the battle here. Um, kind of sucks. I think I already did the one that aligns closer to us. We'll see what happens, like I said before. Um, let's see. Terrible, terrible, cordial. Still 249, so. 
And also we do all this stuff, but I just want Italy in with us. I want Italy in with us, but we're still doing We Survive. And also I read this one before, like we played off screen again, but like if you want to do this again, please go ahead. Hardland influence would decrease by 2.5%, which is pretty nice. So we'll definitely wait to do the military's friendly rivalry. And then the greatest victims. Ooh, we lose some growth, which is fun in exchange for that much more political power. Oh my god, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Ooh, and more Air Force. Yes, please. Yes, 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 please. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing okay myself, but happy Junarinos, everybody. Happy, happy June. ASW helicopters, which we never, ever, 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 ever use, but compartment guidance radar to help out our guys in the air. We could use it. And we're still going with 2.68%. Hey, that's not bad. A fresh off the presses, 0.8% more growth. Not bad. Overall, this could be a lot, lot worse. Minimal funding, maximum funding here. Nice. Anything else here? The American proposals. Um, we got, we survived, of course. I wanted to increase Italian influence as well. Increases both ours and American influence slightly. Moderately increasing Italian independence. Uh, well, that much political power, we can do that first. That's fine. Restructure the system. And let's go look here. 35% 35 is still... 300! Holy fathers! Oh my goodness. Public approval, just in case. I don't want to mess around with that too much, so... The, uh, Japanese economic recovery can wait. It can wait. As long as we get Italy in with us, that's the most important thing. But the greatest victims. The Zaibatsu's Misu, Misui. Mitsubishi and Sumitomo have taken heavy hits and great losses from the turbulent economic wars, costing them great fortunes and resources and wealth, and so, at the prompt of advisors and councils, it is necessary that they require bailouts. Fukuda Takeo has suggested, upon evaluation of the scale of their influence, that we should take a more careful, harmonious approach when stating the terms of any possible bailout. Kishi's faction, however, takes a far less diplomatic stance. Their planning from within the Commerce Ministry has drawn them to the opinion that the weakened Zaibatsu should be squeezed. Even further, they are indeed at the mercy of our government, and we should Personal, certainly make use of the weakness to oppress a regulation and agreement that they could not be settled at any time beforehand. Hey, Japan wins! If you want to read this one, please go ahead for the Japan, the Japanese Emperor. Oh my goodness, holy crap, now that's very nice. Please, please, please. Military cooperation, medium investment, thank you very much. Looking pretty good. And poor, terrible, terrible, cordial, still not bad. And technocratic relations are good as well. 258 though, I'm not too worried. 9% relations, whatever. Their influence is only 3%. I might improve this. I want to sideline them again. Decrease by the relations by 5%. That's really nice, actually. So, no bell yet, but we can wait. Yeah, we're just going to wait. Alright, so with this one, Japanese military parades. Yeah. Keep it over there. Keep it over there for now. 150, not bad, and overall we're doing quite well actually for us. Happy July, everybody. 2.7% growth, better than our debt interest. So eventually this should go higher. The GDP, in theory, should go higher than our debt to GDP ratio, and we get a full 1% more growth. Not bad. Restructure the system though. Oh, how's this going? Also, I did move our army over here just in case, but in search of new ideas. Kaya thumbed through the proposals he had been reading in the past several hours. Japan's economy was in ruins, and while Kaya would be the one to rebuild it, he could feel the daggers pointed at his back. Nearly everyone in the diet was aiming for Kaya's throne, and having sidelined Kishi and Shina, not even Kaya's own factory could be expected to remain loyal forever. Kaya needed results, and he needed them fast, which is why he had turned to the two men standing before him. Fukuda Takeo and Aoki Kazuyo, both men who planned to unite the Dai with proposals emphasizing the role of the private economy in the wake of the Zaibatsu's past domination. Kai had to admit, their backgrounds as Ministry of Finance bureaucrats muzzled during the war showed, uh, uh, showed in their proposals. They echoed the ideas of the 20s and early 30s, however. These were Kai's best minds on the subject, and the proposals were well developed. Kai looked up uh, at the two men and asked, These proposals are strong. Do you have any other resources that we can turn to? Aoki was first to respond. The cabinet planning board and home ministry still have many of their predecessors documents for us to refer to, he paused briefly. However, many of the actual specifics still need to be worked out, he added with an acidic tone. Fukuda nodded in agreement. Kaya sighs looked back to the proposals. Even though their details were somewhat vague, they were, they were all they had. In the wake of the tremendous failures of Yasuda and the 40s establishment, these proposals might just be the solution to Japan's problems. They certainly couldn't hurt Kaya's position in any significant manner not already in effect. Old ideas become new again. Squeeze them dry. I like squeezing. Hmm. Mm, it's okay. Enact creeping acquisitions. Interesting. Versus politically convenient pardons. Influence decrease. What? Performance increases. The hand that feeds. Uh, as much as I want to squeeze them dry, I don't want to increase their influence, so... Yeah, if you heard about this one, please go ahead. And there's that one, too. Politically convenient pardons. Versus the hand that feeds. And which we're going to do, too. But what's on this left side? Our trust is stronghold. Not bad. The ways of Boko Minkan. Conservative power to Takahashi's protégés. Probably go that route. Offer the stability. Power to begin to improve. That's nice. Going into the red. Oh, crap. Reach out to farmers. That place will decrease. 
Second appearance will introduce. Okay. Ooh. But poverty doesn't do anything here. This is good for poverty, though. Um. Construction speed is pretty nice. Be careful planning. Foucault is careful approach. Ooh. A economic pillar stabilized. A stable welfare net. Poverty begin to rapidly improve. Oh, crap. Um, what do you trust a stronghold? Stronghold. A government, although handed the powers to administer the empire by his imperial majesty, relies on the support of its ministries from below. They are the organs of the state organizing information, categorizing data, and delivering upon government agendas and policy initiatives. The prime minister, morally aware of this fact, has chosen to rely on his two greatest supporters from below, the Ministry of Finance and the Home Ministry. There is little chance that we will face any challenge or hiccups in the implementation of these plans. Packed with bureaucrats largely aligned to our plan for the empire, these ministries are a stable base of support wherein government agendas can be rolled out. However, it will not come without a cost, and there is no doubt officials will demand promotions, though this is an affair best handled by Aoki Kazuo. Kazuo, yeah. Not bad. Looking pretty strong here for now. Still cordial. And we're only good with our own group. Mm. Oh, and we got the research here too. 270 in debt, that's quite a bit. Mm, boy, mm, boy, that's a lot of debt. 1970 is still 66, which is fine with us. Keep working on some logistics because you can. And 2.7%, pretty nice. Come over here. 38% is so not bad. 95% government stability. We're an extraordinarily stable government here. That's so nice. Anything here we could do? Just in case. You know, I should have kept the people, but 1.45645 is not bad. Uh, it's about to question. Oh, look at that. Army makes go down. Oh, huh. okay. Uh, so security is about to. Where are the about to? Admin reforms. Honestly, even though we're losing that much political power, this is still good. I, I, I like this one a lot. It's good. Low hardline influence. Get more political power. Good. Maximizing growth, we just saw that one. It's about to question. Oh. We lose point one growth. Wait. Oh, so it's just going to be negative pe penalty to us. But we get plus... Ultimately, minus point one five, which is going to be so nice to have. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, we can help the Chinese, but they seem to be doing okay without us, so... 255 is really good as well. Come on, can we win? Can we win? Can we win here? Please, please, please. Come over here, because you can. Get some scout helicopter companies that we'll never, ever use. And who wins the issue? We win the issue too for the Japan or the Japanese emperor. Oh, that's looking really nice now. Military cooperation followed with what? Anything here? No. Still August. We get a photo in Europe. Celebrations broke out in cities across the sphere today as Tokyo and Rome officially signed. Italian entry into the co prosperity sphere. While some in the sphere of Italy might instead join the American Leto FN, the sphere's perseverance and the close ties with Italy seems to have won the day. <laughs> With this move, the Sphere's interests in the West are one step closer to being secure. The Sphere not only gains a large foothold on the Einheit's path its various doorstep, it also guarantees the Sphere's access to some of the world's most vital trade routes, including the Suez Canal. Not to mention important Middle Eastern oil supplies. The announcement of the alliance has led to a small surge of Italiomania among the population, with Italian music recordings selling faster than stores can import them, and language schools being inundated with requests for Italian lessons. They made the right choice. Oh, do we have them? The t oh my god, that is beautiful! We have the OFN completely dominating down here for now, of course. But, oh, we're Madagascar up to here, up to here, all the way through all of Egypt and almost all of North Africa. All the way. Literally. Treviso and Venezia and Ljubljana and Zagreb. Oh my god, that's beautiful. But the teetering collapses. I understand that the backbone of the economy, said Aoki, furrowing his brow. I understand that we can't hope to survive without them, but they're also what brought us down in this mess. If Yasuda hadn't been given as much leeway as it had, they'd still be with us today. We simply cannot afford to bail out the Zaibatsus unconditionally. They have a place in Japanese society, a very specific place, and we cannot allow them to overstep it. On the contrary, it is precisely because Yasuda knew their place that they went down the path to destruction. Said Fukuda. Everything went through them and they died for it, but every aspect of the government, the armed forces, and yes, private enterprise was involved. In all their dirty dealings, Yasuda did exactly what previous governments told them to, unless we give them a degree of independence, we're allowing them to be the funnel for state corruption. And all that will be again, but with the new bankers instead of Yasuda, not to mention what people like Kishi could use for them use them for. That may be the case, said Kaya, but we cannot change the future, we can only change the present. Mm -hmm. And right now we need to make some very important changes. Ones we won't have a shot at unless we can maintain some level of leverage over the Zaibatsus. It's us. The hardliners are chaos. They might not survive. And out of those three, we're clearly the best option. For now, we can afford to squeeze them, and we have no other choice. Any further concessions will have to be just to be for just that, the future. Now let's get to work. I can't believe we actually got Italy with us. Holy crap. And now we're going to do strengthening our economy. It's, it's economy time. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. I did not think we could actually do that. I did not think... With all the PP that we're spending, that we could get the flipping Italians into our sphere. Oh, the Chinese are here too. 
Uh, can we see any volunteers? I don't want to see any volunteers, but we obviously cannot. That sucks. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we did it. Of course, we might need some political power to help raise up this stuff too, but you know what? One thing for the economy. Or maybe build some stuff here too. City investment strategies. Admin offices, satiate the army. Uh, we're going to need a lot of political power for all this stuff. Yeah, this stuff is not bad, but the economy is probably better to do first. There we go. Alright, healthcare reform. Poverty will begin to rapidly improve is nice. Inflation increases, that kind of sucks. Education reform, rapidly improve, rapidly improve. This is not bad, too. Strengthen pension protections. Increase minimum wage. Let's do health care. 0.01%. How much political power do we get now? 1.87. Kai has fun so far. Um, though I, I want to go down this way, but... Especially because the conservative side, where we're really helping them out as well. But... And I want to get improved poverty. I really do. But at the same time, I think we're going to go with our protégés. We, we did say earlier that we're going to go on our own. So, Tahashi's protégés. An outstanding and rising star in the Ministry of Finance, Fukuda Takeo, has been met with amicable applause from members of the cabinet over his proposals for the future of the Japanese economy. As planets rust on our desks, only awaiting the approval of the Prime Minister in pursuing heightened economic growth. Our bureaucracy is overbloated and overfunded, requiring a culling against necessary to trim the fat from the barely living, breathing economic organs of the Empire. Fukuda has offered us a solution. It has plotted a policy of stable growth. Throughout select fiscal policies and targeted spending that can carry the Japanese economy through periods of its undisturbed growth. Unmolested by external deficits and domestic troubles that plague the Empire's rivals abroad. Nice. Ah, I do that stuff because you can as well. Economy, September, 2.2%. Not great, but better than this. Still have 11 billion in deficit, but whatever. Let's not talk about that. What's over here? Send weapons and funds? Nah, they're still struggling over here, but they're going to run out of steam eventually here in Yunnan, so. Which I will play someday. I'm not sure when, but someday. I mean, map wise both sides are t filled with lots of men. Eh, I got some artillery still. Still got a 10 guns. It's because I have no guns now, which is nice. A split in the cabinet. Once again, Kai was looking over some proposals for how to restore the Jap Japanese ailing economy, as Aoki and Fukuda stood waiting for him to comment. The proposals they produced by the bureaucrats in the Ministry of Finance and Cabinet Planning Board were far more detailed, and it was a miracle that such detail had produced, or had been produced in such little time. But there was an issue. There were two incompatible proposals sitting in front of Kaya. He addressed the two men standing in front of him, so as I understand it, you need me to resolve your dispute and strategy, the two men nodded. Kaya looked at Aoki and said, uh, the first, Aoki, explain yourself. Thank you, Prime Minister. My proposal is simple. A state-led program for economic recovery and social organization it was built upon the well-founding principles of bureaucratic planning and stability that lead to our nation to prosperity in the past. My proposal will also help us gain the support of the more conservative members of the Diet. Fukuda <clears throat> quickly cut in. Those principles have clearly failed us once. Let's not give them a second chance, he turned to Kaya, who motioned for him to continue. Yasuda has granted us an opportunity to rebuild Japan's economy from the ground up. We should seize that opportunity. An expansive investment budget and Keynesian uh, spending will revitalize Japan's economy and help fortify it against future crises such as this one, clearly. Aoki interrupted him. Like anyone would support such a proposal. We have to be realistic here. The two quickly devolved into arguing a situation Kai had become all too familiar with over the past few days. Kai turned back to the proposals. Even if it threatened to splinter Kai's administration, a choice has to be made. A choice must be made. Uh, the bill's not active in the diet. We can do this bill. Poverty rate begin to improve. Greatly increases minimum investment in social spending. Growth will improve, but we get two and a billion more deficit, which I cannot speak apparently right now. Whatever. Agriculture development begin to improve. Well, how's agriculture development? Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. But more growth immediately. Going to the red. The economic wars have been like a sledgehammer to the knees of Japan. Swinging it off its feet and dragging the disadvantage down with it. Our guesses were correct. Abysmally regulated financial sectors and a speculation economy were to blame and now the nation must suffer. It is the government's task, duty even, to help the nation get back up to its feet and restore some honor in the working people of the empire. The Prime Minister, accompanied by the Council and advised Fukuda Takeo, has decided that it is in the nation's best interest to tackle these things head-on. Deficit spending must be enacted, providing jobs and stable growth to breathe life into the economy. State-driven programs may frighten the members of the diet, particularly fascinated by the locks of the coffers, but... We have confidence, confidence that this is the best path to walk. 250 is still not bad. Um, I still want to increase technocrat influence. Sideline these guys. I mean, that would be bad, but we don't really have to. And we don't have that much political power, so we have to be really careful about how much we actually use and spend here. So, just got to be a little careful. 
the three sacred treasures, electronics. Of all the nations should stood shoulder to shoulder in the co-prosperity sphere, the Empire of Japan carries a torch of scientific advancement to the guide of the liberated younger brothers of Asia into the future. The mighty nation wields great scientific and educational achievements from the development of ore refining mineral extraction technologies to the mass production of modern medical and surgical equipment to, and continues to use its technological grace to develop the younger nations surrounding it. Leading from Tokyo, advancements in the fields of manufacturing, computing, and machinery developed a culture of innovation and determination to modernize the economy of the Empire. The improvement and refining technologies of the, from the Greater East Asia War, as well as the progress with new feats of research in the years since, have prided Japan as the leader of the electronic and technological development and the co-prosperity sphere and among one of the greatest competitors internationally. Moreover, investments in military engineering since the Greater East Asia War has proved Japanese ability to defend the sphere from foreign incursion. Tokyo's arsenal consists of a multitude of modern arms, from colossal ships with some of the most advanced heavy weapon systems in the world, to Small arms, meticulously calibrated to withstand the harshness of climates. Furthermore, the Japanese arsenal of ICBMs and modern nuclear weapons and warheads stands testimony to the Empire's determination to defend its territory and support the brother nations of Asia in the face of foreign aggression and expansion. Modernization has always been important to Japan. 41%. That's still awesome. Still awesome. Okay, so we're going to spend some more here. Uh, power decreases a little bit more. That's fine. Power gets slightly better. Education. Yeah, I'll probably do education. I don't want to increase uh, unemployment, so there you go. Hey, oh, wow, rapidly. They're not kidding about rapid. Nice. Very nice. 2%, not nice. Inflation, going up quite a bit higher. That kind of sucks. But whatever. Better logistics are nice, though, too. Get some of that as well. Yeah, going into the red. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. It happens. But now we've got to save our PP, even though we get roughly two a day, and get ready to vote. Well, as you can see, the reformists hate us. They absolutely hate us. The Ketoites were poor relations, but a dinner invitation. Fukuda looked over the address he had written on a scrap of paper a few hours ago, and looked up at the restaurant in front of him. This was a place Kai had invited him out to dinner for, and it was a restaurant befitting a prime minister's salary. The receptionist quickly guided him to a quiet table of the restaurant with an excellent view of Tokyo's sky skyline. The table possessed only two chairs, one of which was occupied by Kai himself. If he had invited Fukuda here alone, then Fukuda was clearly trusted by the prime minister, a good sign for the events to come. After exchange of greetings, Kai cut straight to the point. I decided to back a proposal to revitalize Japan's economy. Tomorrow we will put together your proposed investment budget. Thank you for this opportunity, Prime Minister. I can assure you that you made the right choice, replied Fukuda. He was glad to hear Kai agree that the Japanese economy needed to be revitalized under its own power. After a few moments of silence, Kai spoke again. You should keep in mind that you'll need to keep other factions of the Yokosun Kai in line. Fukuda was quick to reply, of course, PM, or Kai. I'll begin contacting faction leaders as soon as possible. You also need to keep Aoki informed. His proposal may have been rejected, but he's still cabinet secretary general, and his input should not be ignored, said Kaya. Fukuda nodded in response. Kaya put a lot of trust in Fukuda. He needed to play this smart, or he could end up sinking both of their careers. Finally, Fukuda spoke. I won't let you down, but reach out to farmers. Actually, this one, uh, we can't do this one yet, because we will not, we'll have a bill in the, di in the diet. So, oh, we can do that one. Uh, we'll get to the military's friendly rivalry first. That's kind of fine to get this started going slowly. Two of the primary organs of maintaining the Emperor's peace has been his bold standing army and his expeditious mighty navy. For almost a century, the two wings of the Japanese military defended our shores, brought peace to our uh, uh, lands and, and neighbors' lands, and subdued the enemies of the people's freedom so much that harmony in the East may flourish. However, after beating the Americans and Chinese in the A Greater East Asia War, the rivalry between the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy has, although far from diminishing itself, continued unabated. In recent years, many have gone even so far to determine the clash of interests to potentially undermine the stability of the Kokutai. Our government believes that something must be done before the situation spirals and that investigations are to begin immediately. 265, oh look at that. Even better than earlier. Even better than earlier. Political favors, yeah. And what are we at? 41%? Nice. 2% still. 2.1%. Slightly better than earlier, but still not that bad. Growth is... Mm. Debt is... Mm. Let's keep an eye down here, too. Total spending, quite a bit. But, overall, like, what do we need? And More anti-air, but we're working on that quite fast. We make about 14 a day, which is really nice, actually. So, Anything else here that we really care about? Interceptors? No, thank you. I'm sorry I don't use those. Strategic bombers. It doesn't make sense to get rid of them yet, but whatever. I don't, I don't want to deal with them. I do not want to deal with such things. Keep doing that too. Still a side lineup, but their influence is literally just 1%. We might do some more stuff here once the next pill is pa uh, started or passed, so give us a little bit of time and we'll be okay. Beautiful, my friends. Not bad. One is not enough. Oh, expertise is going down still. Admin efficiency is barely going up at five. Agriculture, research. Ooh, that's not good. Academic base is still going up though, too. Not bad. Less growth, but whatever. 
increase minimum wage. The action power goes down a little bit more. Actually, is there one here that hurts us with popularity? No. Well, strength and pension protections. There you go. Where are we at for this? 299. Not bad. Government stability is so high, though. A budgetary dive. 44%. Nice. They say the supplementary budget proposal was a thick document would be an understat understatement. A true magnum opus for an economist and technocrat contained within its 900 pages was the government's vast recovery program. Public works, rural welfare, and expanded social programs saved subsidies a whole lot. It was tried and true, an easy and a solution to the worst of the economic wars, deficit spending to be inject demand. The only issue with deficit spending, of course, is that it creates deficits. The proposal was thorough with how much funding each program was expected to require, and the tally numbers weren't pretty. Many billions of yen of expenditure would be sent to the budget balance into perhaps not a nosedive, but certainly a sharp descent. The finance ministry is upset, Aoki remarked. The old bureaucrats among them say that the recovery plan and its spending would cause issues with debt and worsen our reputation. Our reputation's as bad as it can already get already. And it'll stay that way unless we can deliver results and recover from you as soon as downfall, Fukuda responded. I'm not a fan of the deficits either, but they're necessary to move on, a growing pain, if you will. I do look to Kaya, who sighed, all eyes are upon us, simultaneously scrutinizing and sizing us up and looking for leadership and guidance. That's our, only, that's our current system. We must spend, if only to show our confidence in the economy, lest everyone else loses confidence and stop spending a far worse outcome. Keep the cash flowing. 83%, we're going to get it done. If we get here, economy becomes slightly more centralized, growth increased by 0.75%, and increases our GDP by 2%. And government stability will increase by 6% if we get it done. So what do we do with government stability if we get it done? Like, we're doing really well with it, so... Huh. Reach out to farmers next. As we pivot towards implementing new policy arrangements, Fukuda's platform of stable growth draws our attention to the traditional pillars of the Japanese economy. The rural sectors, the farmers in the heartlands of the home isles, have worked tirelessly to support the Japanese people from even before the reign of the Emperor Meiji. And they have all demographics across the empire. have suffered without adequate relief for far too long. Our initiatives will be a handhold for the farmers to approach agricultural modernization, but allowing them to produce far greater yields at much lower cost. Efforts to offer subsidies to farmers will be rolled out across Japan's rural regions. In alignment with Fukuda's projected plans for economic recovery, however, we must remain aware of the landlords and the reputation for kneecapping subsidiary aid to tenant farmers throughout the implementation of our plan. Nice. Because you can. Yeah, we're not going to do anything here yet. That doesn't make any sense to not bad. Yeah, no one from the reformers supports us. Even a good portion of our own faction doesn't support us too, so. Bill on the dot. Looking pretty good for us. 58, 83%. Not bad, not bad. Happy 1967, everybody. Hope you're having a great year. Only 2%. Ooh, debt to GDP ratio went up a little more. Debt's getting slightly smaller, though. Inflation got up a little more, though. Hmm. Not great, but peace conference is over. Who died? Oh, was it Long Yun, maybe? No? Wow. You guys took a lot. Oh. Wow, that's a lot of resistance, guys. Von Heildolf has not done very well, has he done? Must have been at war. That's a lot of defense, 30%. No wonder they're losing. Or they weren't doing that great. Uh, the bell passes. Great. On to the next one. So, a meeting with Hori Aizo. I don't put, have many words to put in it, Prime Minister, but I don't want to understand how I'm supposed to keep our allies in line with this budget. It hasn't been that long since the war in Mongolia, and Mai Jiang has still hasn't recovered. And that's not to mention the issues in Russia and Southeast Asia. If it could even... I've only increased our budget to that of the navies. I believe that would be sufficient. Threats are beginning to resurface, especially in Russia and China. Kai nodded. It was all understandable, and unfortunately, the army ministry was completely correct. I share your thoughts, Hori. I increased the naval budget to ensure our superiority in Southeast Asia for reasons I'm sure you would understand. I sympathize, Kai said after a pause, and I'll take your thoughts on board. Give me a bit of time, and let me see if I can't whip something up for you. To that, Hori Aizo simply smiled, but bid Kai a pleasant morning and left his office. On the rest, on to the rest of the day. Good, 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 good. Okay, looking okay here. Looking a little better. More growth, yes, yes. Reach out to the farmers. And actually, do we have enough support yet? Eh, it's okay. Proof technical at relations. Why not? We got 14 more? Not bad. Not bad at all. I want to silence guys, but Industrial Stimulus Expansion pa Act passes. Actually, with this one, we're looking really good on equipment here. So I'm just going to keep investing in what? These guys. Just keep building for now. You can load by one, that's fine. Three millies? Oh, we have one more. Um, um, give him a day. There you go. How bad that hurt that, that bottom one? Not bad at all. It's fine. 
Ah, the passes. Hiroshi lugged his shoddy old backpack onto his back as he left his school. It was his final year of secondary education. Once he had aspired to go to university, but those were lofty dreams and fit for a working class boy like him. No, his destiny was a cleaner's garb in a restaurant or balancing trays of glasses of liquor priced higher than his life. It saw him lose for money as it was. His, after his father had sobbed upon coming home one day after being fired from his factory job all lives, his parents and siblings, and it suddenly turned to Hiroshi, as the eldest son had become the breadwinner for the household. He had no qualms with working, but it seemed the employers had qualms with him. Um, unemployment in the city, and indeed the rest of Japan had shot up in recent years, no doubt due to the Asuda crisis his father always muttered about at the dinner table. The few businesses which still put up hiring notices had all turned him down. Unless anything changed, he might soon have to go begging. Hiroshi turned to the corner and was surprised to see a large crowd gather in front of the modest city hall. As he approached, the loud and excited chat of the people confused him. What was going on which had pleased so many? What's going on? he asked the young man, no more than five years older next to him. O Obayashi and Kajima are putting out calls for every willing, able bodied man. They're hiring. The man was jubilant, and so was Hiroshi. The largest construction company is recruiting so many? This was a chance he needed. <clears throat> Fukuda's careful approach. If you want to buy this one, please go ahead. As well as available welfare, uh, stable welfare now, which would be nice to do, but whatever. His careful approach. As we step into the period of relaxed pressure, with spending at its deficit and costs to our coffers lower, and we must not neglect our attention paid towards budget. Although it may have fluctuated in recent times as we manage the Yasuda crisis, we cannot let it trip our administration's management of the recovering economy. The moment our political enemies get a whiff of our cabinet's anxieties, their attacks will commence. And so, the gutting knife is drawn once more. For the sake of the budget's stability, it is necessary that we cut spending across the board in the regions of the empire. Korea and Taiwan must face the harshest cuts. For the sake of the homiles, welfare will need to be bled too, for the sake of longevity. More growth, yes please? Uh, I'll support doing it, actually. I haven't looked, looked at this in a while. That's good, that's good, that's good. 100%. We should get some sort of bonus here. If we're at 100% government stability, that should be give us some sort of bonus, right? Uh, 80%, 87% paranoia. Not bad. Actually, if I decrease this by 5. Eighty-two and a half. Eighty-two and a half. Perfect. Well, for now, until we ruin it, but whatever. Happy, happy death to you. Who died? Not us. Oh, god dang, I was hoping this would be this guy's. Oh, you guys are doing really well. These guys are not easy to take out early on. With Republic of China, when I played as them before Toolbox Siri, not easy to kill off. And Muscovine must be being released right now. I mean, that poverty rate change, minus 0.28. This is going a little too well for me. I mean, he has a couple years. I don't know. It just feels like it just, everything's happening so suddenly. Just so much rapid, like, stuff. Military regular rooms, Muscovine. Oh, there goes Caucasian as well. Oh, we want this stuff as well. Um, we're still 266. We're we still passing a, a bill on the diet. No. So we can go spend some more stuff on, um, Evil Pulse still exists. Look at them. We're going to spend stuff on the economy. We can do also this later, but this is more important to do. Minimum wage, workplace safety, inflation, labor protections. 2.9%. Look at that. Nice. Oh, it's actually going down. The economy is growing higher. Yeah, it's, the deficit got worse, but whatever. 4% 4, 4 inflation. Not bueno. But inflation is going to increase. Oh, decrease by 0.1%. That's not much. Agriculture will get better. I'll get uh, another thing to the bill here. That's fine. Oh, there they go. Good job. We had to send our soldiers to China, but let's get The mad dogs were put down and ordered in the southwest range once more. What did we get to eventually? How do we get 5 million manpower here? Holy crap. That's a lot. The re Reapers do. Stacks of newspapers and reports lay across the conference table, income and living standard disparities, images and stories of lives with no future like mine. Indictment after indictment, staring up the Kai and Fukuda. At the same time, both wondered if the reports were anything more than dressing, or busy work for the journalists and research outlets, tales of, telling tales of what everyone already knew. There were two Japans, one in the streets and one in the fields, the latter trailing behind the former in almost every respect imaginable. It's simple, said Fukuda. We've allowed ourselves to become agriculturally dependent on Southeast Asia for far too long, an unstable place at the best of times, on top of that. We can't continue sending our excess rural population to Manchuria. The land's not as empty as it used to be, and the government's not what it used to be. We are forced, then, to invest, to modernize, and make Jap Japanese soil produce what is expected of a global power, and to give our farmers what they are due. And the only way to do that is by stepping up on the toes on the landlords like what who got us into this mess. Kaya Sai. I don't disagree with you in principle, but we have to pass a bill here through both houses. I don't need to tell you how much land the average peer holds, and they're not going to vote for something they see as a challenge to themselves. If we can't present this as a boon to landlords and tenants alike, then we'll achieve nothing, and we can't simply let that happen. But this, this is just another stopgap. We just can't keep t kicking the can, Fukuda stopped himself. No, you're right, but all the same. 
We can't just give uh, landowners money and equipment and pray that it'll be put to, put to productive use. Any bill we draft here is going to have to be very precise and very carefully worded. Otherwise, we won't simply have something nothing done. We'll have done less than nothing. Don't worry, I'm sure we can slip a thing or two past them. When selected, kind of become more decentralized now. More inflation, but more growth. Slightly increases workplace safety. So we're still looking pretty good here. Mm. We are passing something of the dice. we got to save some political power just to make sure that we can get enough support in the future. Oh, Eugene Honor Construction Authority. Well, are they going to give us anything here? They're still a puppet now. Looming fiscal crisis. Oh, huh, like us. Army of the Southwest. Rope to Prosperity. Burma World Revival. That's cool. Our economic pillar is strengthened. Oh, we're going to wait for that one. Also, most responsible. Ooh, I don't want to spend that political power yet. The Imperial Army? An illusion. Imperial Army. The Imperial Army, the mighty arm of the Japanese Empire that established an army across Greater East Asia, and also the British and American imperialists, has seen better days. In fact, despite gleeful ceremonies and active recruitment, it is ridden and plagued by inefficiencies, corruption, and disorganization. If our nation is to be honorable and defend against the enemies from within and without, this cannot be permitted. With swift accordance, Prime Minister Kaya will take action to remediate issues with the functioning of the Garam forces. In terms like our own, there is not a moment where the Empire can afford to maintain a weakened and limited fighting force. Our enemies lurk around every corner. Let us not grow comfortable with a blunt force void of precision and effectiveness. 3% growth. Oh my goodness, it's shooting up like crazy. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're on the road to recovery, my friends. Oh, no more 3% growth. God dang it. Well, we were on the road to recovery, and we're still on there, but we got some bumps along the way. 1967 armor. Um, uh, just keep doing armor and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter too much. <sighs> yes. Yeah, we can do stuff here too, but... New admin offices. I mean, just probably best to wait. As much as I want to do that, it just... Political power and making it... Having enough political power is a balancing act. Actually, we can do this one more time, but... It's best to wait. Just wait. Fukuda's careful approach. Minus 0.25%. Nice. And we're still 61% here, which is pretty awesome. Pretty darn awesome. Public 44%, 288. We'll probably increase our influence as well later on, but we'll see. A careful approach. Compromises the salt of politics. Another day in the dime, and another yet, uh, yet another debate. Thought Fukuda. Maybe this was inevitable after all. Of course, today's debate was boring, as the technocrats literally couldn't do without the votes of the conservatives. Look at this. And rather unluckily, said conservatives were the only ones in the disagreement with. Gentlemen, let's not be too hasty, answered Fukuda, gently. There must be some way we can compromise. It's for the good of the Empire after all, is it not? <clears throat> if you desire some compromise, then you better revise that thing you call budget as soon as possible, a conservative snap back at him. We can't afford such levels of spending, especially with Yasuda's legacy looming over us. You know, intervened Kyle. There is something we can do. The colonies and ministries won't be happy about it, but what are you thinking about? It is obvious, pursued the Prime Minister, that the mainland is our priority in these dire times. As such, it would make the most sense to redirect funds that are currently in, the use, in use in the colonies, such as Taiwan and Korea, to be the mainland. Would that be an acceptable compromise? I think so. I'll have to see with my colleagues, but I think it's indeed acceptable, Prime Minister. Then I believe we have a deal. Another thing passes. Great. More decentralized, more inflation, but more growth. Good. Alright, so where are we at? Cordial. 253. Um, I want to keep technocrat influence high, So, but where did do that? So, sideline him. Increased by 5%. Oh, influence increased by 5%. Uh, the relations increased by 2.5. Eh. Mm. That, that's not really worth doing, is it? Hmm. One for me, one for me, and one for you. Let's see. Conservatives are not bad. Independents are actually higher than them, though. How's this looking, too? 77.5, 82.5, whatever. Good enough. Oh, was I put down the phone with a huge grin and practically skipped all his way to the ledger. Finally, the fat cats in Tokyo were doing something for the little guys in the forgotten prefectures. Aomori was back on the map. He would have to get his accountant to look at the numbers more carefully. But already he was marveling at the possibilities. New fertilizers, machines, ca cash, grants, at all or to no expense to Owaza personally. There was so much that could be done. Yield and profits were going to be to rise sky high. He was going to be rich and they could spend his holdings. So much more to do. So, so much more. Still, he thought, shaking himself out of the giddy frenzy, government allowances didn't grow on trees. The new resources had to be provided with. Would have to be allocated very carefully indeed. The tenants could be tr he could trust. Naturally, would be getting the first pick of Awaza's fancy new toys. No point in spilling out money in the wastrels who had only wasted on frivolous things. He pulled up a list of names and a few circled a few. Never let it be said that the loyalty goes unrewarded, or that complacency went unpunished. 
All that silly thought. Looking around the room, appearances were also important in developing this new enterprise. How would he and his family be taken seriously if, as businessmen if he didn't look at the part? The wallpaper in his house was a ghastly relic of the 50s, and they couldn't expect to be taken seriously in their new endeavors, with it still haunting the family home and with his wife. Her, he loved her dearly, but she didn't exactly look like the Japanese farming magnate's spouse of tomorrow. But that could be fixed. With his boost, that's all, all that could be fixed. No rest for the wicked, and our economic pillar stabilized. The path to this point has not been easy, and at long last we can put down the gutting knife for now. While we may have bloodied our noses with our necessary cuts to spending and welfare, the pillars to uphold the economy and the future of our agenda have been stabilized, and our rural constituents are satisfied for the time being. However, urban discontent is on the rise, working class families, urban business, and white collar employees are expressing foul opinions of our recent legislative agenda. The quarries and complaints must be dealt with soon, the Prime Minister, contacting staff across various ministries, has accepted both the use of benevolent and genuine, and if necessary, more coercive methods of influencing public opinion. Beautiful. Corporatism modernized, huh? A cautious path for the future. Where are we at here? Mm, 277 is not high enough. I want more influence. Oh, increase the power by 50%. Because of factors over 50% power in the diet, this action is less effective. Oh, that sucks. 1%, huh? Mm, not good. 247 is not good enough, actually. Unexpected vacation. It was good to be back in Japan. Most Jamaicans didn't, hadn't seen a Japanese uh, nation once in their life. And, oh, what is this? And didn't look upon Hayo too kindly because of it. They would look upon him a lot less kindly if they knew that his actual purpose was in Jamaica. It's time the Caribbean nation was well worth it, however. Keeping careful tabs on the nation from inside the nation was easier than doing it from Japan, and led him to understand Jamaica far better than any of those men sitting in front of him did. The recent chaos on the island lent itself to anti-Americanism, a fact of which Hayo was going to make very clear to the assembled higher-ups. Allow me to introduce the current situation in Jamaica. A state of emergency issued by the Jamaican Prime Minister Norman Manley has intensified an already uh, tense situation, one of which we can take advantage of. The main proponents of this chaos are Jamaica Labour Party leader Alexander Bustamante, Black Power Affiliates, and the religious social group titled Rastafarianism. They have formed a sort of unofficial coalition in the nation, a coalition which rejects American imperialism on the island and seeks to overthrow the current government. So I suggest this to you. As I have no way to do this myself, I will leave the suggestion to you now. Find a way to influence, fund, or arm the coalition, and we could find ourselves a new ally in America's backyard. Allies separated by continent. What the heck is this? This is Jamaica? That's not Jamaica, is it? No, it's Honduras. With their encouragement, their fervor will continue to grow and manly buckle. Why do we... Why are we looking at Tegus... Tegusepagala, pa? Inflammatory propaganda. We will spread propaganda throughout Jamaica affirming the protesters' grievances. We'll tell the truth that the U.S. is refusing to acknowledge. Manly's nothing but its puppet. The leader of a repressive re regime which unfairly targets minority groups. Ah, uh, so what does this say? The overall size and intensity of the riots is crisscrossing Jamaica is represented by fervor. If fervor is decreased and repressed for long enough for the government to regain control, the riots can be quelled. However, if fervor reaches a sufficiently high level for a long enough time, the manly government's days may be numbered. Violence is uncommon. While protests in Jamaica began as a largely peaceful affair, the instigators and gangsters are increasingly turning towards violence. As either side gains access to more weapons, violence will continue to rise. High levels of violence will make it more difficult to decrease fervor through peaceful means, and may even lead to more drastic action. Set like rabble rousers. Manly's failed government has left many poor and destitute. The promise of payment and protection will certainly be enough to convince a few of them to start scuffles among protesters and police. Drug of PNP leaders. Widespread or out of control. In the streets of Kingston, gangsters affiliating themselves with the PNP and JLP trade blows. We can offer one of these young soldiers a better target, a PNP leader, wh whose whereabouts or intelligence serves have kept close tabs on. Striking the ruling administration, even unsuccessfully, will show the protesters that Manly is fallible and contact Honduran cartels. Ah, this is why. Getting guns to the hands of Jamaican patriots in the heart of the OFN is no easy task. Thankfully, America's backyard is rife with violence and crime. Uh... As Kikan has already established ties with petty drug smugglers in Honduras who may be open to exchange. We have opium, and they have untraceable guns. To ready the ports. This is going to cost us dearly, but whatever. So what we want to do is get more violence. So fervor's okay, but we want violence. We want more violence. We like violence. So much for our majority lead here, but whatever. Progressive Conservative Party, huh? Alright. That's not good. 247 is not good enough. We get... I hate that. Not enough PP. Moderate. Nice. Hey, 4% growth. Look at that. Wow. Inflation still going up, but that's alright. Happens, happens, happens. Imperial Army. 
Illusion. The army was the proudest institution of Japan. It had liberated the western colonies in Southeast Asia, and it fought alongside Indian freedom fighters in Burma, Assam, and Bengal. It oversaw the conquest of China, Japan's ancient rival. A glorious institution, the pride of the nation, at least that's with a view of an outsider looking in. To Ogawa Taijiro, the army looked like an unfunded relic of the past. The barracks he was summoned into was barely functional, looking as if it dated back to the 20s. A layer of rust had gathered underneath every metallic object in the assembly hall. <clears throat> Uh, and a small f family of tanuki had settled on the upper floor. One of the dog raccoons, in fact, sat atop the highest floor, looking on as the milling group talked amongst themselves. Recruits, a bloom booming voice called out to the crowd of assembled conscripts as the doors opened, with finely dressed soldiers beckoning them inside. Boots, one called out. Utensils, another said. Steady equipment, clothing. What a shambling wreck. What they did, decided I have to serve in this crop stain, Ogawa thought. While waiting in line for his boots. No, no, I'm size 22 and a half. These are too small, he said when it was a turn, except the man ha that handed him the two pieces of black leather was already talking to another recruit. He almost got a word out in the complaint, but one of the uniformed soldiers had already pushed him aside. As Ogawa walked back into the mass main hall, he heard the shrill call of the Tanuki. He looked up, seeing those two black brown eyes looking straight back at him, and made another squeak, a long squeak that went up and down, and then up and down again. He was laughing at him, the dude. What else could go wrong? Fur will continue to grow. It's simmering, huh? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. We're gonna pour a lot into here. Ooh, maybe I wanna wait to do some of this uh, government like bill stuff. That might be good to do just wait. Oh hello. Yeah, all this other stuff's gonna wait. Oh. Oh oh! Okay, so we do the navy branch next. Ooh, that's not good. Hmm. So we do the Imperial Navy as well. The Imperial Navy, the glorious flotilla that humiliated the Rush, mighty Russian Empire, made a fool of the Kaiser and turned Uncle Sam into a doddering old relic of the past, suffers from a neglect. Since the end of the Great, e Greater East Asia War and the death of the heroic Admiral Yamamoto, the dockyards have been quiet and stagnant, and the sailors have been idle and they wadded through their conscription. The Empire of Japan was once internationally feared and respected for her brave and bold navies that cut through the crashing waves and raging Pacific storms. It's of the utmost necessity that a grand and marvelous ship stand atoll above the waves once again and we're able to reach all four corners of the globe without being caught up in the tangling web of limitations and bureaucratic inefficiency. Now Prime Minister Kyle will see to it that the navy's not neglected in its grand military reform. Crap. Which means we've got to cancel this one immediately and then do this one. My apologies for wasting a little bit of political power here. So in 28 days we've got to get that one done. Which will get done in 25 days. So my apologies about that. We'll get it right it up. Crap. I'm glad I looked down here. I'm glad I looked. As much as we want to do this one and rapidly improve poverty, we're still going up by minus 0.39 every day. So I'm not too worried about morning March. The rice gruel tasted as disgusting as it looked. This crap has barely been fried, Ogawa thought. His comments were having similar thoughts. Barely anybody had touched her bowls. Perhaps being woken up at 4 in the morning was doing a number on their stomachs somehow. Ogawa was doing a number on their, stu uh, uh, stu on their stomach. So... Uh, Ogawa fancied that those tanuki were still laughing at them all. Ogawa chucked the bowl aside, let them have it, he muttered. It was barely ten minutes later that they were told to strap on all their equipment. Ogawa wore his helmet, a backpack full of gear, and those boots he still hadn't gotten replaced. When the recruits made it to the course line, each man was given a mock rifle, seemingly weighing as much as an actual firearm. Then the company was set to marching. The march was long and hard, up and down the hills of the northern Japanese countryside. It had been raining the night before, and his effing boots had a hole in them, saturating his socks. He had to find a good... Good way to get rid of them, lest his toes froze. Hold up, we'll rest our food. We're turning around in ten minutes at the call. Ogawa pulled another man aside, almost as breathless as he was. Kane, do you have a spare pair of boots? These ones are effing killing me. I would rather strap two garbage bags to my feet. Uh, no, sorry. The officers ordered the equipment from some shitty manufacturer, Kane whispered. They did it so they could pocket the rest of the money for themselves, at least. That's what the others told me. Eat up, we've got to leave soon. It wasn't long until the march resumed. With a soaking feet in his sore stomach, Ogawa trudged off beyond the rest of the company. Hayo, Yao will get his. 247 is not good. Oh, grease palms of the ports. The cartels were open to providing weaponry, but logistically many challenges remain. While smuggling our cargo through untraceable ships wouldn't be hard. Finding friendly harbors would be willing to turn a blind eye to support freight uh, will be trickier. Oh, now it's green. Now we can do that. Okay, makes more sense. And we want more violence, right? Oh, man. That was really decreased. Holy crap. Inflammatory propaganda. Yeah, the Americans do not like it that we're playing games with them. Which I'm glad there's there's more interaction between us and the Americans now, so. And I'm up in the land, long dead. Uh, yeah. 
Early one morning, a group of dazed Russian men appeared in Tokyo, uninvited and disoriented. How they journeyed here was unknown, but the men, dressed like mystics and hunched like pilgrims, started to shuffle towards the direction of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Once the envoy arrived at their destination, they hailed themselves as emissaries of the rightful Tsar of all the Rus, His Highness Ulrich II, and immediately requested a meeting with the Foreign Secretary. Their introduction was as rude as it was bizarre, after all, the rule of the Rurik dynasty over Russia ended well over four centuries ago. Yet there they stood, impatiently waiting for their assumed meeting. Apart from the initial confusion caused by the rival, the ambassadors were ushered into the office of the foreign secretary. Although he certainly did not fully understand the strange land they came from, he knew that the connections with this kingdom would potentially bring great benefits for him in the country. What an odd bunch. Very, very odd. Yeah, very weird group of people, but... Oh, well. Very, very weird. Uh, I'm going here. Max, 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 max. Low, 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 low. That's good. Research is coming along. Very nice. Ah. <sighs> I can safely say I feel like we're doing quite well now. Kuda's careful approach. It's good to be careful, of course. Economic pillars stabilized. The bureaucracies of old. <clears throat> nice. Relations increased by 5%. Growth of growth by 0.35%. Nice. Good stuff. Write it up. Write that down, too. Word it like it's at least... Uh, destroyers have already been refitted with modern equipment. And 80 more listed for their same refits. Missile cruisers, modern carriers that make a most of the shipyard's upcoming orders, further widening the qualitative gaps of their forces. Done, Ensign Kawada Toshiro uh, uh, scribbled down the last few words Lieutenant Commander Sanjiro had said, summarizing their findings on the stack of American publications and secret diplomatic cables they spent weeks combing through. Crafting an intelligence report around sounded glamorous, but at the end of the day, they weren't actually in the field. They're just two overworked officers looking through files and writing down notes in a stuffy office. Add in that shipbuilding infrastructure had been heavily centralized on the western coast of North America, and port facilities around San Diego have become the primary naval base in the nation after the loss of Pearl Harbor. Sano wiped his brow while setting aside the last of the major dossiers they had relied on to create the report. Even with their naval presence on the Hawaiian Islands, there's already a material risk that naval forces will suffer defeat in the Eastern Pacific Theater. Ensign Kawada paused. Uh, are you sure that you want to write that? Will the general staff punish us for defeatism? If the old guard in Tokyo chooses to punish us, and punish us instead of taking the technological innovation and intelligence coordination seriously, then we've already lost, Sano sniffed. I've got no interest in dying in a losing war. All for the Empire. Nice. Good, we're not going to lose anything here. Oh, thank goodness. Mm, political papers, we can close that one for now. 247 is still pretty good. And we can improve technical craft support here, too. Uh, by 5%, it's not bad. Hmm... Use before the bill comes out. Yeah, might as well. Excellent. Great. 266 is nice. Good. Did hurt a PP, but that's okay. We got a couple of days before we had to. We can spend more here. So right now we're at what? 55. Inflamed and moderate. Not bad. We just got to get the more violence. We love violence here. So much violence, please. Hmm. Sorry, I hit something on my desk. The cartels are on board, and the ports are aware of our scheduled deliveries. Now all that is left is sorting out the logistics of the exchange. Forever and violence will increase slightly. Unlocks decisions to smuggle armaments? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, they're inflamed even more. No, no, go up, 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 up. Stupid Americans. Nah. Hm, I say that as an American. Insight rabble rousers? Oh, a little bit of lag. And the Navy problem. As such, the investigation committee concludes that the Imperial Navy is extremely unlikely to prevail against the U.S. Pacific Fleet both in our home seas and the high seas, inciting the inferior quality and quantity of our ships and the lack of centralized command system. Lieutenant Commander Ka Kashiwa closed the report and saluted a seemingly shock of the poor state of the very service he belongs to. Thank you, Commander. You may now leave, replied Kai to the young officer, and tell Admiral Michida that this is unacceptable. With his face reddened with shame, Ka Kashiwa muttered his final defense to uh, Kaya. A Prime Minister, in my defense, it if it wasn't for the inadequate budget. That's enough, said a seemingly displeased Funada Naka. Leave before I take away all your stars on your shoulders. After the Commander left, Funada Naka looked us up at the tea. Prime Minister, I think Kashiwa has a point. Compared to the Americans, our Navy budget is way too modest. Even a layman like me could tell it's problematic to use the ships made in the 40s. Kaya nodded and agreed, but this is not enough. The Navy must start working with the Army whether they like it or not. We are the only global power that does not have a united or unified military command, and if the day really comes, the Americans and Germans will beat us hard. Prime Minister, if I may respectfully disagree, replied Funada Naka. It is unnecessary to anger the Navy. By forcing them to work with the Army, we both know that once the war starts, it's the end game for the world, and all we need to do for now is to deter the Americans. Show them. We have com competent ships, and they will think twice before they will do anything unreasonable. Minister, I've decided. This stupid rivalry between the two branches will ruin us one day or another, and I am determined to end this nonsense once and for all. My decision is final. The hundred year problem ends today. Violence, violence. Ooh. Fervor's no longer calmed. Yes! Targeted PMP leaders. Yes! Oh my goodness. They're in flames 73. That's pretty nice. Shipments be monitored. Oh. Reducing your impact on violence. No doubt that at the behest of the American puppet masters, Jamaican police have begun searching shipments for illegal weapons. A portion of our deliveries may be intercepted during this period. Crap. On this one, we need all the following. So, 
are also most responsible. Ensure political loyalty. Uh, recovery is not bad. We're doing a bill here? Yeah, we are. Uh, a sufficient injection. Floating air base? Look at this one. Money cannot be divorced from its divisive nature, nor can ex be exchange be divorced from interpersonal influence and elaborate ploys. We have learned over the years that one of the major conflicts between the Imperial Japanese Army and Imperial Japanese Navy is that over that of funding. Budget allocations and numbers that stack higher and higher means everything to the seemingly bottomless bellies of the wings of the military. Like starving vultures circling a fresh corpse. They squabble and pack nipping at each other for as long as they can get. Fortunately, we have a way of me mediating this. Let us throw enough money at both wings of the Empire's military, enough funding for neither the army nor the navy to jab at each other for, but not so much if they grow fat and lazy on their temporary embellishment. It's unrestrained. Just get high, 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 high. I've never done this before as well, so this is my first time doing all this stuff, so we'll see what happens. And of course, Wales died. Hey, 4.3%. Nice. Deficit. Oh, but it's green now. Why is it green? Hurts our political power a little bit, but it gives it more growth. Alright, not bad. Unrestrained, moderate violence. Ooh. Martial law imposed the guidance of the Americans, Prime Minister Manley, has begun the process of instituting martial law across the nation. Will also unavoidably deter some of the protests. It will most certainly cause others to radicalize. Forever will begin to decay over time, but violence will start to build. So we gotta get the super high then. Oh. Smuggle weapons. Violence and purple increase. 94. Jesus Christ. Which is a little bit more. Oh, we're losing control. Are we losing control? Or are they losing control? They should be losing control. Look at all that. I love drug smuggling to America. Uh, unrest across Jamaica is at unprecedented levels with little sign to stop. And the Jamaican government seems wholly unable to address the situation. Unless the government is able to restore some serial blunts of control, the crisis will soon reaches breaking point. Come on, come on, come on. For the to decay. One step ahead of the Pacific. And actually, make sure that we're not doing anything else here. Political favors, unemployment subsidies. I can all wait for now. One step ahead of the public, though. And here I have yet another question from the reformists among us who seem to decidedly be particularly curious today. Aoki said mockingly, eliciting a few chuckles from the bureaucrats among the diet. This one asks if we don't feel that Fukuda and the government have turned away from urban and industrial interests, which form the backbone of Japan's economic power. Fukuda, something to answer? As a matter of fact, I do calmly retort to the Minister of Finance. While I do understand the concerns of the opposition, I do have to say that I find them to be mostly unfounded. Indeed, the Yokosun Kai still hold sway over the rural areas, and we only need to be wary of problems in urban centers, such as strikes or protests. However, this shouldn't be too much of a problem, as we have put in place many preventative measures to avoid this, as such, of course, the Light Industrial Development Act. As Fukuda, Fukuda continued talking, Kai observed with satisfaction the situation from the technocrats' bench. The young new bureaucrats sure had some political acumen, he thought. Staying ahead of the public and assuaging their fears before they really materialized was a crucial skill to have in such a cutthroat world as politics. Now we only need to make good on his promises and pass the bill into law. This hopefully won't prove too much to handle for the astute parliamentarian, however. Thank you, Fukuda, resumed Aoki, who seemed to have gotten slightly distracted as Fukuda's speech uh, continued on. Um, who could blame him, honestly? The die is sometimes was a tiring place. Now, does anyone have other questions? Let's hope Fukuda's right. 266 out of 233 needed. A lot of house superior support. And increase our government stability. If we pass this, increase our GDP for by 12 billion. And admin efficiency continues to improve. Which actually, we're more than halfway done with that. Nice. Alright, so now, spread inflammatory propaganda. More fervor. Is there unrestrained? Yes, please. Widespread. Violence should be going up now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <gasps> Do we have, oh, we got it. Martial law failed. A family matter. Tell me Norman Manley's voice was low, tired, and hopeless. His features were gone, and his voice, and his eyes those of a man who had not slept well in days. Is there anything you can do? Alexander Bustamante was slow in answering. The empty room the two public rivals met was devoid of anything but a table and chairs. Despite everything, despite the public spats of politics and different beliefs, they were still family, and they couldn't, they could trust each other. To be honest, even now, with that said, Bustamante knew his cousin wasn't going to like honesty at this moment. No, I can't. They're too angry. I can condemn the violence, but he shook his head. Those people, they stopped listening to me a long time ago. There's only one thing that'll satisfy them now. I stepped down, Manley's voice was almost a whisper. Yes, Bustamante said simply. You step down, consider it. If you do, I promise that I'll be able to rein their extremists in. You'll be safe, and your people will also be safe. All they want is you gone. Without an enemy, I can curb their worst impulses. He was silent for a moment. Norman, it's for the greater good. If you don't, then the violence isn't going to stop, and if that, it has to end, and only one of us has the power to do that now. Manley folded his arms. Bustamante could see that conflict play out through his eyes. He didn't want to give up. He didn't want to concede. He was looking for some way, anyway, that this could still be saved, and he was going to find nothing. If he hadn't, th if he had thought of something, they wouldn't have met. With a defeated sigh, he bowed his head, and the capitulation of Norman Manley was complete. If it will end the violence, I'll resign. There isn't another choice. Beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. Grantley er Herbert Adams. Regional nationalism, minority rights struggle, and dreams of unity. Oh, weekly stability is pretty nice, but 36 bits aren't very good. A bloodless coup in Jamaica, my friends. How would the Federation react? Can we get him? In? I wish you could get him in with us, but you know, that's a lot of political power and command power we did spend here, so. It is what it is. Hopefully now we can start building up a little bit more political power here, because we definitely, definitely need to keep it here. I wish we could get more out of this, though. I wish we, yeah, why, why can't we get more out of this? We spent all that time. Can we build relations in Honduras? With drug runners and whatnot? So after this, we're going to make sure that we get more comp uh, compliance and agreements with this stuff here, too. So that's just stuff we got to do. Just stuff we got to do. So Because poverty is still improving. I mean, it just, it's just it's nice. It's nice. Two, six, six, seven. Our public opinion is very nice as well. So... But we're riding high now, but we're not always going to be riding high, so we got to be ready for the future as well. Almost 4.6%. Yes. Yes, go up higher, higher. Under 14.2%. Let's see if it goes any higher after this. Because it's near the end of the month. 4.6%. Look at that. So what is green? What does that mean? Hey, it went down by 0.1%. Not bad. 4.7% growth. Beautiful. Investments in Siberia. From outside the entrance of the foreign office, a raspy cry demanded to be let in. It answered swiftly, and the door was swung open, revealing a few faces that had become oddly familiar to the workers inside. They were the faces of the ambassador of Rurik II. Since they had been relocated into a more permanent location, they knew, now sought to come to an agreement on the Japanese investment, an offer which was readily accepted. The Japanese ministers ne present needed a little reminding of the hidden wealth of Siberia, which they knew would be fabulously profitable to exploit. The impeccably efficient techniques and machines of the Zaibatsu would only allow for more wealth to be generated. Such a result would only serve to benefit both sides. Yet the risks of investing in such a volatile region remained heavy on the minds of both parties. Any investment at such a stage in time would surely be a gamble prone to many char changes that were yet to shake Siberia. The Russians were dismissed soon after and told to wait for an official response. All that was left for the foreign minister to do was make one. Allow investments? Allow the investments. $20 million is nothing. It's literally nothing for us. Oh, God, yes. It's, I'll be honest. Like, at the beginning of this episode, I was a little, like, slightly under the weather. Like, me personally reading all this stuff. Because I wasn't feeling good when I woke up or when I started recording this at all. But, like, as the days progress and we've been working through this, 5% growth! Oh, I'm feeling so good about this episode. Oh, I'm feeling so good about this. I'll be honest. So, so, so good. Even though in the next couple episodes with the oil crisis hits, we're going to feel, be feeling really bad. <laughs> oh, we lose 75 political power. Oh, my gosh. Squeeze it dry. I like squeezing, but still. Oh, my goodness. Well, it was well known that between the Jap Imperial Japanese Navy and Army, a bitter divide existed and dating back to the Second World War and earlier. But the Navy Minister, um, Mitsuo Fujita, and the Army Minister, Hori Aizo, seem to contain none of the same resentment, at least to the Prime Minister's ears. So far, they both sat through the meeting amiably. If Hori would allow me to speak, I would be most interested in pursuing development into a new line of carriers. The carriers the Navy currently has are not quite up to scratch. Most cannot service modern jets correctly, and modern jets are all the carriers currently carry. An investment into nuclear subs is something else I would think to prove fruitful. If the Americans excel in that field, it would not do to let them have the leg up on us. I have a little more to say than I already have, Prime Minister. You know my concerns about our allies' commitment to us. Modern weapons in the military or army will help us keep them in line. No modern weapons in the army will do the opposite. Right now, we have no modern weapons in the army. You two raise concerns I have myself, Kai remarked. Not concerns, reality, Hori says firmly. R reality, yes. It will take a bit of time to draw the paperwork, but I can grant an increase in funding for the Army Navy. Run your budgets by the, my secretary, and I will look into them both. If there is nothing else, I would bid you two farewell. Farewell. On, the rest, on with the rest of the day. Oh, we have a bill and diet. Wait, we do? Oh, we'll just... There we go. Let's get this one done first. Hey, Bill, pass it. More growth. Admin efficiency gets better. Government stability. Cool. So now we're at 77%. 254 is not bad. Good relations. Offer concessions, expanded military facets. Oh my goodness, they're not selected. Decreased by 5%. Relations will go down by 5% more, which is fine, whatever. Um, when selected, we get more military bases, we spend more money. Now, we're good. We can sell on them, but really, I think maybe getting the conservatives on board, at least a little bit more, would be quite good. Who's the biggest faction? 57. Independence. Independence would be better, actually. Terrible, but that's. <sighs> Independence are already really low. It's already really piss poor low. Conservatives, independence, the same cost by five percent. Um, it's the same cost. Then the conservatives, we don't need we don't need that many with them. So, okay, that was a mistake to do. Okay, but anyways, let's do one more focus, and we'll end the episode. Ensure political loyalty. Sure, because I don't want to lose political power just yet. 
An unspoken yet deeply rooted issue haunts Imperial Armed Forces. It chatters around executive decisions, whispers in the halls of bureaucratic offices, and sucks even infantrymen to the barracks. The specter breathing down the neck of the Empire's military infrastructure from the officer corps to even some of the platoons themselves is a problem of divided loyalties. The troops are unruly and are at times altogether too loyal to things that make men weak. It seems as if their hearts are emptied of loyalty to the Emperor and our government. Carved out with the same hand that exchanged for small fortunes. It is the utmost importance that we find a solution. Providing un incentives alongside re-education is so as to ensure that we'll put aside these merchant allegiances and give their all to the Koku Tai. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know how you thought this ep episode has progressed, and I'll see you tomorrow as we we'll continue going down our focus street and making Japan economically viable once again. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.